Brad, this is crazy. Every single one of these people that come out and train with us, every single one of them, number one, they go back home and make way more money. That's the first thing. Money goes through the roof. Secondly, okay, we're all about winning in all the areas of life, not just in the dough. So what happens is they go back home and they treat their wives better, their husbands better, they treat their kids better, and they're more grateful. They quit. They quit being ungrateful about anything because we teach what you teach. When everybody's asking us how we feel, who are those guys? It's like, you know, we want the world to feel like we feel and our salespeople that we coach, we're not coaching them on some crap that we ain't done before. You know, we've been where they've been at. We've gone where they've want to go, but we also know what it's like to feel and be in their shoes or be in entrepreneurs and owners shoes when they reach out and they're struggling in those areas, you know? Why is it, why, why is it you're so passionate about changing lives? Well, because at 18, I got in the car business and I had nothing. I literally uh, got a, a job, luckily, in sales, didn't deserve it, didn't know how to sell. First deal, my manager pages me and says, hey, do you know, and I'll cut this just straight to the commission part. He says, do you know how much money you just made? And I said, if I just made enough money to eat lunch, because I'm starving. If I made enough money to eat lunch, like five bucks, I'm gold. He said, you just made $1,700. I don't understand that. It doesn't comprehend to me that you can earn that type of money. And that's when I realized that if you love sales and you'll love closing, you'll love mastering the craft that we all fell in love with, with this business, you can get anything you want in life. You'll be able to turn a dollar forever. And the deal is, is that nobody can stop you because when you learn this kind of skill, even if you go bankrupt and start over at zero, you can earn it right back. True. It's the most amazing craft in the world. And I would recommend anybody and everybody, no matter who you are, mom, dad, you're in sales, you're in insurance, you're in cars. I don't care what you're in. Learn how to be great at this. This is going to take you wherever, whatever it is that you want in life and more will come from learning how to sell, close, persuade, and influence. Well, what were you doing at 18? Well, mom and my mom left when I was two, right? So we had five brothers and sisters. Usually it's the raised. dad that leaves. Your mom left? Mom left when I was two, alcoholic, Jerry Springer shit show growing up. My dad was watching my daughter or his daughters, making sure that they didn't get pregnant. Had two brothers, thought to think small. Listen, stay out of jail, get a job. Barely graduated, straight C's and D's. I always say this, anybody watching this, um, people that come from nothing can end up with the most. It's really important that you know that. And by the way, if you had great parents and you went to college, yes, that is so awesome, man. You were raised right. But now go show your parents that you, you, you're going to go do something with it and become a badass. But the idea of it is, I think that people that come from nothing can end up with the most. The people with the highest threshold of pain are the people who are capable of going the farthest because they don't quit and they don't break. I watch people quit every day on their families, their lives, their jobs, their dreams. Well, so at 18, I didn't have a dream. No one ever planted a dream. It wasn't like, hey, what do you want to do when you graduate? It was like, stay out of jail, get a job. Got a job at the car lot, hit that first commission. I was like, you know what? Salesmen, the best ones, and you know this, they're not they're not born, they're made. They're people that sell with passion. And if you see the way I'm speaking to you right now, you know, it, it's passion. It comes from my heart. You know, how many times have you went and bought something and you bought something from somebody who didn't seem like they cared about anything except for just getting you out of their face? Man, this world needs people who are on fire just like this. And the deal is, is when you're watching it, you may say, and that's a little overwhelming. No, it's not. It's how to break every record because it's attractive and people want to be around people that, that sell and that love and that care about people like this. So, well, how did, how did you, is it just natural to you? How'd you develop it? You say it can be absolutely learned. not natural. Holy crap. So whenever I first started bleach blonde hair clothes that just were hanging off me and, uh, I remember my manager said, hey, look, how to get your point across in 30 seconds or less. He's like, you've got to go out and make a best friend within two minutes. Make a connection. I'll close your deals. Make a connection. So rule number one is I didn't know how to get people to like me. And by the way, most people are good at getting people to like them who they're like. What about all the other people? Do you want to take a portion of the world and just cut out a little piece of the pie and say, I'm only selling to those people? Or do you want the whole pie? Whole he pie. said, you want the whole pie, baby. He goes, get good at going out there and being a chameleon and getting along with everybody. Everybody that you're with, make them laugh, make them have fun, make them enjoy being around you. He's like, I'm telling So that's, that's something that I had to learn. That was one of my first skills. Secondly, I was one of the worst speakers in the world. Brad, I stuttered. I literally stuttered all of the time. I was embarrassed the way that I spoke. He said, slow down, slow down. Instead of playing checkers, like being reactive, play chess. Think ahead, slow down. 
And I started to think about that. And all of a sudden, my stuttering in a way because I took control of my mind. My mindset became strong. I believe that people can buy. They came to buy and they're going to buy as long as I do my job. I got good at the process. I got good at making connections and relationships. And I focused on speaking. You know, a lot of people are in sales, Brad, but they don't think that they're public speakers. They are. Whether you're speaking to one person or 10,000, you're a public speaker, man. Do people want to hear you speak? If you're a salesperson, do people want to hear you speak? You got to make sure they do. And that's a skill you can learn. And you teach it because I'll tell you, your people are fired up. How do you get everybody on your team so freaking ready to run through walls? Well, so if you're talking about on my team as in people who work for me, yeah, I believe it's leadership. And I believe you have to lead by example. So a lot of people don't do that. They tell their people how they want them to be, but then they're the exact opposite. Sitting in an office, hey, you guys work really hard today. Have good attitudes. Go sell. Nah, man, why don't you get out here with us on the front line, sell, get jacked up, get motivated. You go close some deals too. Let me see you do it and then I'll follow. We don't have a lot of that anymore. We have managers now and not leaders. Mm. So I had a lot of managers growing up. I had a couple leaders, couple for a short period of time. So I decided till I die, me and my wife, we're going to be leaders for our team. And by the way, we believe what they believe and they believe what we believe. We're all in this mission together to change lives. So we're all in unity, right? Like literally people's money means nothing to us. We got plenty of money. Do we want to grow and make more money and do all that? Yeah, but we want to change people's lives. And if you can change people's lives, you'll be forever wealthy. Mm. Hey, and by the way, you, your YouTube channel's like off the chain. It's, it's growing like crazy and f for not just salespeople. I mean, not just car sales people. Yeah, not just car sales. So we, we, we are in the automotive zone. And by the way, right now, RV dealers, power sport people, uh, power sport dealers are all signing up with our dealer platform that is obviously on light speed. Thank you. We love you. Our business has 10 X, like Cardone would say it, since we've signed with you because it's so badass. Everybody loves it. The content's killer, but everything that your system does, everybody loves it. So we, we crush it in the automotive space. We crush it in the power sports space. We crush it in the RV space, motorcycles, Harleys, all that stuff, used cars, independence, but also people there in the solar space. They take all of our courses. Everybody that goes and sells real estate, anybody selling insurance, they take our courses too, because at the end of the day, it's kind of all the same. You just take out 10% of the words. Now, could we niche down some direct courses to them? Sure. But if you took one of my courses, just one of them, if you took one of the platforms, if you had a company and you wanted to teach them how to sell, I assure you every single person watching the passion that I have while I'm teaching, teaching them how to sell, close, speak, persuade, and influence, overcome objections, dude, they're going to change their life. Think about it. Who's teaching them now? So that's one of the biggest deals is that, yes, we do, we do teach in all sectors and spaces, but currently right now we are running through the automotive space specifically. I always say the guy that chases two rabbits loses both, right? So we're chasing that one rabbit right now. We want to uh, uh, dominate the automotive sector. Yeah, well, I've been in that, and I think you're a shoe in for that. There's not really anyone as enthusiastic or uh, close to the – actual work in the space anymore. And I think the key, Brad, is momentum. Remember when you were running a store? One dead day on the showroom floor ruins everything. One dead day, you got three bad weeks, baby. One dead day. Momentum is the magic key. Your people need to have a platform just like the one you have, Brad, that we've decided um, that we partnered with and use that these dealers are having their guys log in for 10 minutes a day. And literally what it does, it increases culture. It increases attitudes. It increases morale. It sells more cars. It can give them, so it, it sells more, bottom line, and it gets people ready to sell. Think about it. How many people right now are coming into a place and the salespeople are practicing on them? They ain't done any training yet. Look, it's early in the morning right now. I walk into the lot. Guy walks in and says, hey, I was only interested in the car you just sold. He's like, all right, cool. Boom, gone. What's a car dealership averaging per, 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 per copy right now? Five grand? There's five grand. They just pissed out the window, but they won't spend $1,500 on a training program. Come on, man. Now's the time to wake up. And I'm going to tell you, Brad, we're in the era of the worst salesman in the history of time. You know why? why? In the automotive space, the market's been up 200%. 200%. You know what that means? Right now, at the time this podcast is made, the 10 car hand last year is a 20 car hand this year. The guy that made 200 last year made 400 this year but he didn't get any better. The market's up. So guess what's going to happen six months and a year from now when it self-corrects? Number one, he's going to be mentally depressed. 
because he's going to realize he wasn't as good as he thought he was. Number two, if his managers weren't training him and getting him prepared for the curve that's ahead, it's like riding a Harley and not looking ahead what's in the road. Okay, you're just going to get smacked. And when you got to go back to closing, negotiations, objection handling, actually being skilled at selling, you're going to fall on your face. Or work twice as hard to get the same amount of numbers. That's right. Absolutely. A lot of people don't have the fortitude to, con- to, to put the work in. How do you fix that? I think it's your why. I think it's your drive. Look at me. I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, if you don't want it, look, if you don't want to change your life, your life's not going to change. It's just the truth. You know, we can sit there. I, you're an influencer, Brad. You influence me. You've inspired me and motivated me to do more, want more, believe I could have more. But I got a why. You know, your why is different than mine, but I got a why. Why I show up. Why I would want to train. Why I would want to work. Why there's 60 minutes in an hour. I'd want to work every minute in that hour. Why? If I don't have that why together, wipe it all out. When you see a guy not working, he's lazy. That's it. How do you find your why, do you know? Yeah, I think that you got to decide what you want in life. And um, there's, a, there's a little thing that I do, Brad, I'll share it with you. Um, Ed Milet always talks about altering your identity, right? That's his words. He says, altering your identity. I'll quote that because I, I love it. And I've always watched it. You know, I say my mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. So if I want to go to a level, I'll study someone. Success leaves clues. So if I want to move to another level, what I've done is I've literally tricked myself into success, Brad. I would say this. You say, Andy, how do you get people to really work hard and how do you get them to have a why? Number one, you did a million dollar morning deal. Forgive yourself for all the shit that's happened in the past. Say, hey, you know what? All the shame and all the guilt and all the stuff, let it go. Give yourself permission to have a big life and then stop lying to yourself. Those were your words. I do that same thing. And that helped me because we've all been stung or stung somebody or done something wrong or been a bad person at one point, but we're not today. Jim Rohn said, it's not about who you are. It's about who you're becoming. That's all that matters. You killed somebody yesterday. Don't care. Who are you today? And I'm not saying it in that term, but like who you are today is what I care about. So people got to decide that, look, okay, you were raised to think small. Everybody talked crap on you your whole life. You did a lot of uh, real mediocre things. You quit on yourself your whole life. What are you going to do today? So I believe I call it reprogramming. Reprogram yourself to see who your future self is. And by the way, start acting like that person today. That's the goal. So to create the why, it would be this. I don't like who I am. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trick myself. I'm going to write down who I want to be. I'm going to write down what those persons, that person's habits are. What is their attitude like? What is their work ethic like? How often do they train? How do they treat their wife? How do they treat their children? How do they smile when they're around people? You know, like, how are they? And then you know what? I'm not that person today, but I'm going to start living in that person's life right now. And I'm going to trick myself and I'm going to let reality catch up with it. Have you seen some transformations like that in the past? Oh my God. If I told you, listen, Brad, we get hundreds of text messages, hundreds every day of people talking about like, not just, Hey Andy, look, we got guys that are gonna make five, six, 700 grand this year. Okay. That's amazing. Automotive sales, 2019 top guy making 200 grand 2022. We got guys making five, 600 grand. Okay. Like we've scaled some machines. But the cool thing about it, it's not just the dough that they're making. It's the life transformation. It's literally people texting saying, hey, man, this is crazy, but I was going to kill myself. Not, a, not now. You, you gave, I took the mud off my eyes. I can see now. You, you inspired me to believe. And by the way, I said that term in the beginning that people that come, up, come from nothing can end up with the most. I really, truly believe that your problems that you have are really not big problems. They're really not, okay? You just need someone to tell you they're not that big because we get in our own head and we try to tear ourselves down. People are their own greatest asset or their worst enemy. It's just the truth. And 99% of us, we're our own worst enemy. You know, like I see you and I'm like, man, Brad Lee. Oh my God, Brad Lee. And then you're inside your head saying, oh man, I got all these problems. I got this horrible email this morning. I got this. And I'm like, dude, you're Brad Lee. Dude, dude, you're Brad Lee, right? Like, People, it's perspective. It is perspective. You got that shit right. Yeah. And realize, man, how lucky you are. Dude, if God didn't want you here, you wouldn't be alive. He'd have done, you should have been dead already. And you know you should. The fact that you're here, you got big things to do. Wake up. But you got to be around somebody, Ed Milet again. And you might be like, dude, is this an Ed Milet show? No. He talks about people running at a cool 70 or a hot 110. He's like, dude, if you want to go and you want to get in great shape, go be around people who are obsessed with the gym, who work out hard, who don't play on their phones when they're in the gym, who literally want to get in there and then and, and destroy themselves. 
because they want gains and they're dieting right and they're eating clean. And you go get around those people, you get in great shape. That's the goal. You got to figure out how to, how to run at a hot 110 in your life. So you got to surround yourself with some people running at a hot 110. So our is, is, deal, that, is that what it says? Hot 110? He says a hot 110, baby. He's like, look, if you get around me, you know, you, you might run it at a 90, but you're not at a cool 70 anymore. And I'm at 110. Here's the goal. Everybody's at a 70 until they figure out how to get to a 110. You want to know how to get there? Find someone you can get around who's at a 110. Study them. Follow them. Listen to them. Watch everything they do. And by the way, they're not perfect. Everybody that has a mentor out there right now, I want you to understand this. That guy's flawed. She's flawed. They're, they're, everybody is flawed. So when that person makes a mistake, yes, I knew they were real. Let's go, baby. Man, I love watching you mess up. You know why? It reminds me that I can mess up too. No big deal. Wh Let's wh move when's on. When's the last time I messed up? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Dude, I mess up all the time. I'm, I'm, like I said, that email this morning, you know, it's not a big thing. It's just, you know, after a while, dude, of the same stupid shit, you eventually go, come on. Anybody. I guarantee you Ed does it too. Yeah, no, totally. Everybody does it. It's just, it's just, you know, frustration. But, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I have that gratitude. So, I mean, today's going to be a great day. The question is, how great will it be? Today's going to be the best day how of our damn life. How much better is it going to get is the question. Not, is it going to be a bad day? I don't have bad days. They're all nope. good as long as I woke up. And if I didn't wake up, shit, I guess it's a bad day for everybody <laughs> else. Still not, still not me. <clears throat> I love that. And, but I do want to say, though, that... I would, so you asked how did someone get to the hot 110? And it would be, Brad, if somebody really like looks up to you and you're their mentor, and I always say my mentors in life are people that have gone to where I want to go. You have gone where the person watching you has been. You have been down on yourself. You've been down on your luck. You've been dead broke, okay? If anybody doesn't know your story and they're watching you today, look, you're on move 14, they're on move two. They can't take their move two and compare it to your move 14. That's not fair to them. But when you have a good mentor, you can go from two to 14 faster. See, I believe in time and speed. I believe now's the time where most people have opted out of winning. They've opted out. You know what that means? They're not training. They're not studying. They're not mastering the craft. And you all know what I'm talking about. So you know what they've done? They've opted into losing. And you know what that means? Mediocrity. Normality. That's death. Death on a stick. I'm out. No ways. <laughs> Now, if someone's working at your organization down there, is this a daily conversation you're Every having? Every day. Because I went down there, everybody's like freaking fired up. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it's a show. It seems like that's just how they are. Mm. You guys are like conquering mountains. You're always working out together. Hey, listen, and, but I mean this though, Brad, is that look. Wait, yeah, what? What? You know, hey. All right. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel. Hey, all right, listen, but hey, Brad, I want to introduce you to a couple of my guys. You see little baby young buck down there on the end? And I yep. call him baby young buck because he's my 21-year-old. I do got an 18-year-old back at home, right, who's a savage. But he's 21 years old. His name's Jacob. He's a killer, right? These guys know every word track, every objection, everything that you could say. Watch this. Let me show you something. Hey, Jacob, hand him a mic real quick. I want to show you something, how all these guys were trained killers before I hired them. Anybody that works for me, we don't sell products. No disrespect to Grant Cardone or anybody out there, right? I'm just using his name. Name. Those guys are selling shit that they don't even know about. They don't know Grant's training. They couldn't get up there and teach it. I could die today. That guy can take my place. Me and my wife have a conversation in our company every single day. Hey, guys, what do I say all the time? That sucks. What would happen if we died today? If me and my wife ready? die today, are you, are you guys ready to take over this company? You don't need Is me. this company going to die? The Elliott Who's group? Who's the next up? No, absolutely Who's not. Who's up? Who's all the of leader? them are Who's up. the leader? Who's the leader? They're all ready. Yeah, why you call the group? Because, because Andy Elliott is a leader, but guess what? The Elliott group is the fucking company. That's it. And I'm going to tell you this. That young man right there, look at the fire in his eyes, Brad. He's look at that. He's hey, about to attack listen, you. Jacob. He gets now, a little weird, watch Brad. This. Hey, watch this. Let's flip gears. Hey, right. hey, Jacob, I appreciate you. We're sitting down working a deal. Price, trade, payment. All the numbers are on the table. You're a car salesman. Husband says, hey, man, I got to talk to my wife. Go. Hey, totally understand. As busy Am as life is for most yeah, people, you're, you're the husband. when it comes to purchasing Hey, hold on. Vehicle, Start over. He's the husband. Go. Oh, okay. Now I got you. Man, so I'm going to be full popping Brad Leah. 
Yeah. Bull pop him, Jakey. Jakey. Come on, hey. Jakey. But it's only Leah if you drink Tia. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him sidetrack your brain. Let's go. Don't worry. Hey, I totally understand. As busy as life is for most people, when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, especially with the family, it's generally a planned event. When you left your driveway this morning, I'm almost certain you and your wife had a conversation on what the deal needed to look like in order for you to make a decision. You said you love the vehicle, that she'd be extremely happy with the safety and the fuel economy, and we're well within your budget. So Brad, let me ask you a question. If I can save your wife the trouble of having to come all the way down to the dealership, plus save her the time of having to sit through the entire process, and you could be the hero that takes all of the headache out of the deal. Brad, would that upset your wife in any way if I can do that for you? Yeah. She, would it? She's a raging bitch. Well, hey, that's good. We don't need her here anyways. Let's do the deal. That's no, it. that's good. Even that's even good. the fact that he knows it is fucking incredible. He knows everything. Woo, good they job, know, they, know, they know all these. All these guys know everything. Look, Ryan, hey, I think yeah. the, hey, look, I'm looking at guys looking at a 70,000. Yeah, like, that ain't a sentence or two. That's a whole thing. Period. And then not only that, he didn't sound like he was trying to remember it. He sounded like he meant it. No, he, yeah. he does mean it, and he does know it. Yeah, yeah well, he, know, he knows what the fuck he's saying. That's what we teach, that's Brad. That's when you get deadly. That's, then you, that's then what you we can teach. Say it eight different ways if you need to. Brad, Brad he's getting ready to take Brad, you a different way when you said that. that he's, he's got like, twenty on, other ways on, to handle you know? that. That book you got in your hand, Deadly Scripts. That book, Deadly, it's dangerous. It's is, is, deadly. Is that script in there? Yes, and and hundreds of more. Watch this though. I'm going to hit this guy. Hey, by the way, it doesn't have to be miles. It can free be book, anything. folks. All you got to do is text. No, it's not free. They can order it with oh. us. <laughs> Hold on. It's not on the internet, though, because I just had to put it on the internet, right? So if they text us, we'll get their address, we'll run their card, we'll mail it to I'm them. Glad we'll mail I, them I thought earlier you Done. said you give it to them free. No, no, I said I'll get them a book, right? But oh, hell, unless that. you're sponsoring everybody, let's just yeah, get Brad's card. We got it anyways. We'll it send doesn't the matter. Invoice. Hey, listen, watch this. But Brad, let me, let me, let me run too. I'm just going to show you something. So Ryan, Ryan's sitting here, right? Let's have fun with this, Ryan. Yep, Guy it. comes so, into the dealership, right? For any automotive people or people that have ever went and looked at a car, you're looking at a truck with 70,000 miles on it, and you think to yourself, man i wish i could buy a truck that had forty thousand miles because seventy thousand miles is too high now this person saw the price on the seventy thousand mile truck they're like man i like that but when you go down in miles the money goes up right brad so guess what the salesperson gets an objection like man i like the truck ryan but i think the miles are too high go hey brad i completely understand how it may seem that way however if you were to buy a vehicle with less miles you end up spending more money i mean look at it we got this 2014 Dodge Ram with 70,000 miles. If you found that same truck, same exact truck with 40,000 miles, drove both those trucks for three years, at the end of that three years, we went to trade them in, which truck would you end up owing more money on, Brad? The one with more, with less miles because at the end of the day, going with a highly rate, oh, I fucked that one up. Hey, listen to me. Watch this. Hey, watch this. Can you recover it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then recover it. Okay. Hold on. Let me restart. Brad, I completely understand how it may seem that way. However, if you were to buy a vehicle with less miles, you end up spending more money. Because look, this 2014 Dodge with 70,000 miles, and you have, I fuck, I'm Hey, watch up. this. Let me show you something. Let me teach Sorry. you something. Brad, no, this is perfect. You know what? Because this is real life. For anybody out there watching this right now, I can bury yep. this objection in two seconds, but I'm going to explain this to you. What happens is that right now, he wants to impress Brad. See? Really you know bad. why I got him talking to you? Because these guys look up to you. So what happens is while they're trying to talk to you, they're trying to impress you instead of going to their skill set. When your back's against the wall, you always fall to your lowest level of skill. Am I right? Yep. Every single time. What he's trying to say, Brad, is the vehicle with higher miles, the biggest part of the depreciation cycle has already been taken into consideration. Does that make sense? Yep. So if you go to trade them back in in a couple years from now, the one with lower miles, you're going to owe more money. And when it hits the depreciation cycle because you put some miles on it, guess what? You're going to be upside down. You wouldn't like that, would you? No. So buying a highly rated truck like this one with a little more miles today will save you less money on a monthly payment, less money on a sale price. And guess what? When you go to trade it back in, you won't be upside down. However, on the other one with lower miles, you would be. Or Does that make be. sense? Watch this. Bottom line is what you practice is how good you are. Repetition is the mother of skill. What do you say on light speed? Good content, repetition, accountability, practice. practice. Guess what? I think we need to add mindset because guess what? Well, that's how you become unstoppable. That's right it. Right mindset, right skill set, and the right habits. That's it. And guess what? This guy right here, how old are you, Ryan? 26. He's 26 years old. He went to work for me one year ago. He was working in a paper mill, right? Went to work for a car dealership, took our training class, broke every record, killed it. We called him because we loved who he was. We asked him to come down and work. He just bought a brand new, or signed a lease on a 3,000 square foot apartment. Had a brand new girlfriend. 
Life is good, but all new furniture. Guess what? Life's good. They get a phone call. Guess what happened? Ian says, hey, Andy wants you to come down and work for him. You know what he did? He looked over and he goes, I'm on my way. He left, didn't ask any questions, not what am I getting paid? Jumped in his Nissan Rogue or whatever the hell it was he's driving. Kia, yeah. His Kia, Kia And he drove his ass 32 hours straight to Scottsdale, Arizona, the next morning. His girl, what did she say to you? I mean, she was just like, I literally got, he called me. She's still your girlfriend. No, now we broke up. <laughs> no, she didn't, so Ian calls me. I literally, he says, hey, man, come down to Scottsdale. We're moving down here. We want to hire you. And I was like, done. He says, we're going to work out a lot, but mainly 18 hours a day, you're going to be working and calling people. And I'm like, so I get to work in a call center with you guys and work out and get tan. Done. I'm in. Pack my Kia and headed to Scottsdale. Never look back. Now, well, what he really said, I said, man, and I said, so you just gonna be calling 18, 20 hours a day. That's about it. And he goes, I've always dreamed about being in a call center. And I called Andy and I said, and I said, and I said, dude, this guy's crazy, man. This guy's crazy. And uh, yeah, then he brought just a freaking amazing energy and an amazing fire to our team. And And, and I want to say this to you, sir, anybody that has a team out there, right? Anybody watch it. I'm going to explain this. I'm building a sales team. You put your people in uncomfortable situations. You give them the ability to test themselves every day. Look, I don't care if this is a podcast or anything. You know what I look for, Brad? Opportunities to test my team. Ryan, Next time you see him, he's going to want to run an objection past you like that. You know why? Because he's like, shit, I didn't make that one. I didn't get right. I saw him do it at your event that one time. No, I know. But here's my point is that when you're on the big stage or when you're in front of somebody, guess what? You you train for pressure. And guess what? I always give my guys an opportunity to get a taste of pressure because guess what? It's what makes us great. You know how much freaking risk and pressure you've taken in your life? Guess what? That's what made you who you are today. Yeah. But, okay. But going back to, you know, when we hired Ryan, because obviously this is about building a sales team, you know, a lot of people, you know, hire because of a skill. Like, yeah. honestly, we, we saw that he was a product of our training and we saw that he was a big, big task for us because when he started working for us, he could not even speak. I mean, it was terrible, but you know, that's a, this is what we call a total recreation because the videos that he was talking to you about, I mean, those, is, this is how he's evolved and become the way he is now. And he has that heart and he's always had it since the very beginning. And that's what we look back at, you know, and that's what we were talking about in the beginning. But, you know, we get tons of people that are trying to work for us every single day and we turn them all down. We don't want the people that know the business that have been, you know, trainers or whatever it is. We turn them all down. We don't want any of them. We prefer having guys like Ryan. Underdogs. 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 We're a team of underdogs, every single one of us. And I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, this guy will close 10 for 10 on phone calls. 10 for 10. Okay. You let him on his own. He's just a wild savage. He trains every day. He loves the company. He'll give his life for it. And guess what? I'm just telling you, every chance I get to test these guys, I will. Every chance I get a chance to test myself, I will. Every chance you get to test yourself, you do it. Even when you're not ready, you go. And guess what? I love putting these guys, even though they're a little silly stuff, putting them on the spot. You know why? Because when they're looking at you, when it's me back in the conference room, that's their playground, their territory. It's their den. Here? It's a little weird. You're in a big room. You're here with Brad. You got lights on you. You're on TV. See the camera. You're like, man, it's just a little bit weird. No, it's not. There's nothing weird. You are who you are. And guess what? Don't you ever break. You got that shit, right? Do you learn from this? No, we're not going to hit him again, but you learn from this. No, hold on. He's ready. <laughs> I got this. Hit him again. Hit him again. Hit him again. But hold on. Here's my point, though, is that he's going to go back to war. You see that look in his face? Guess what? That's what it is. This right here is how life should be lived for a sales team. Okay, knock the dust off you. If you fuck up, if you fuck up, do it again. Do it again. Yeah, that's my my claim to fame. Hey, hey, listen, but if you mess up, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Just don't ever quit. That's it. And you never quit, bud. You never quit. Am I right? Uh, Not yet. No, but here's the deal. See, and that's how you little. Yeah, I mean, one well, of these that, days, guys, look. Talk like that, hey, Brad. Brad. Hey, but one of these days, man, I'm I'm done. Like, I'm good. Brad. I'm just going to go chill, sail away, and relax. I don't buy it for a second. No, I, I got, you know, maybe five months left. Hey, hey, Brad, I don't buy it. I'm not going to buy it. But whatever it is, when you're ready, will you just let us know? We'll just step right on in, okay? And we'll just take over this old deal. So. Hey, you guys have to move to Vegas. because he partnered with okay, us. Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. We'll be, we'll be there. Not multiple with that new locations. Facility you guys got. I, I haven't been there in person, but on line it looks fucking badass. 
Yeah, we got a brand new facility. We didn't rent a place like a lot of people. We bought it. We purchased it. We got, you know. It looks big, though. It looks like an old school. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like 30,000 square feet. It's all glass. All It's all two-story. Our sales floor overlooks all the mountains in Scottsdale. It's absolutely gorgeous. Our seminars are there. We hold our own conferences. The conference we're going to have June 4th is going to be in our own facility. It's just amazing. And by the way, my wife bought it. She put it all together in two months. Okay, two months. Listen, Brad. From dirt floors. Listen, she would she would come she would come home at six a.m. Get up, go to the gym, come back at four a.m. She'd come back to the house. Here's the deal: when you set yourself out to do something, you don't stop until you get it done. Period. Anybody out there that wants to know how to win, don't quit. Am I right? You quit, you're done. You want to beat everybody? Just don't quit. That's it, man. Well, not quitting and and going at this level is different. And you said something the other day that actually makes sense. Sometimes you need to quit and do something else that you won't quit. Am I right? Yeah. Like, it ain't like you're in the wrong vehicle and you're like, don't quit. Like, look, this is the right vehicle for us, okay? And when it gets hard and when it gets stressful, whether you have money or you don't and there's massive problems, you don't ever quit. I'm just telling you, man, that's something right there that nobody teaches anybody. You got to go through it yourself. You have to be able to soak up the pain. And so many people, they want to numb the pain. You can't numb it. You got to feel it. The pain makes you who you are. The character, Brad, that you've become along the way, the character, my men, Evan, the guy he's became along the way, I don't care what his rev numbers are. They're through the roof. This guy knows how to make numbers. He's number one currently, currently. The guys are coming for him, Brad. But listen to me. The character that this guy has made becoming the number one is worth more than the revenue itself. Well, how do y'all feel that For he's sure. beating your asses? For sure. well, he's got a week. Well, Brad, Brad, it goes back to like, are we competitive with each other? We're absolutely competitive with each other. We all want to be number one on the board. Unfortunately, these guys can't catch me, but it's no big deal. Ian's, Ian's always close. Um, but we, we compete internally. But just like we teach all these other guys, you got to compete externally against other companies. Externally. We're a team. Man, it's also like even when you're the number one guy or if you're the bottom guy on the board, are you a contributor in the company or are you a consumer? Are you sucking the freaking energy out of the company? Andy brings his whole passion. Jackie brings his passion. Sean brings his passion. Jacob brings his passion. He brings it. But are you coming into the the, the den and you're being a freaking crybaby or a whiner or you're quitting? We are. You know, well, if you if yeah. you if you are, check your shit, man. But like, will you, will you guys jump on people that do that? Absolutely, absolutely. No idea. You, absolutely. You, you already know if you come in with a bad attitude, you're gonna it doesn't it happen. It, it, if you come in even for a second, we can all smell it. Especially Jackie, she smells it right out of the gate. Um, but the goal is, is like every time we try to grow together, it's it's we have a healthy competition outside of us, but we also have a healthy paranoia that somebody else is coming for us, and we're a team, we're a unified front, and together we can't be stopped. So we grow and we kill it you know on our on our owns and Andy lets us run our own individual business because we see the vision in the company Brad. like an entrepreneur but then we compete to crush everybody else crush yeah, the competition sure we're honorable we're number one yep. you do what you say you're gonna do period if you fall through with your promises and it gets back to Andy no dude, dude it's lights out our people are not good. Good. without people you don't have a company no. and I mean us as a company and also them the people watching Mm-hmm. And, and you'll notice a lot of the people come into the VIP Bradley deal. I've called you, Brad, I, or I'll, I'll say, hey, man, I'll tag you on social media and you'll share it on your page. It's because you care about your people. Yeah. And- Look, I respond to every one of my people still me. Mm-hmm. Okay, dude, it's a little bit crazy. Yeah. I just I don't want to lose that connection. And, and I think now since we're talking about building teams, one thing that I have to point out about Evan is, you know, obviously we talk about him being number one. We said it several times, which is a great thing. Um, but one thing um, that that he has and the reason why he's number one, and a lot of business owners can really see this, is when you see somebody that's actually making the revenue and making the numbers, he's holding meetings, trying to teach the other guy, sharing what he's doing to make his business get bigger and better and how much he's helping these other people. And that's when you see the heart. So when you see somebody that's a top achiever in your company that doesn't do that, that might not be a good sign. And that's not growing because it's not growing all of all of us. So that's what we look at. And that's one thing that I can say about Evan and the reason why he stays on that you know, level of being like one or like close to one is because he's giving back. You know, every single one of us that has been on the leaderboard does that. 
that's why they continue to be there. So. Well, and I remember when I didn't do that. I remember when I was number one at dealerships and I really didn't care about the team. And it's because I didn't see a vision for myself in the company. So I really didn't care about the guys next to me. Like I was at, it was like, I didn't care about the brothers that were next to me with these guys, with my brother, with these, they're all our brothers. So like we treat it like a family company. We do everything we can to push each other. But at the end of the day, I also know what it was like to be a selfish top producer. And at the end of the day, those guys in the dealership, those guys in any other business, you should just let those guys go, teach them a lesson because they're not contributing to their company. If they're 40 car guys, 50 car guys, but they're holding the other guys back from winning, then they're not really bringing value to the company. You can't really track a revenue number from a top producer if he's building all the rest of the people around you. And by the way, don't you want your company to be better? Don't you want to have nicer things? Don't you want everybody to have nicer cars, nicer suits, nicer things around you? Well, that that's just something that me and my brother made an agreement on when we three or four years ago when we really started to work on ourselves and learn to build our team. And, you know, when we were in the dealership, we said, look, man, we got to figure out a way to build our team. You're only as strong as your weakest player. You're only as strong as the team that you have around you. Only, you're, as, a one, as a top guy, how freaking sucky is it? How lonely is it if nobody likes you or you're not giving back to the person next to you or you're not helping the Jacob Hagerman? You're not helping one of the new guys that come in. Why? Like, that's, that's not the leadership qualities. And that's one of the reasons why I came to work for Andy was because I saw a different level of leadership and a different level of commitment. There's a shortage of commitment in the world to just greatness. And when I saw Andy, even in like a little 40 person seminar, 50 person seminar, given the passion and energy that he had and then the skill and effort. But then when I went back to watch them and I saw Andy and, and we spent a weekend with them and I saw their leadership with their family kind of goes back to the fitness and family and their commitments to all the levels of life. I was like, shit, man. I'm going to freaking, I'm going to chase this guy. I'm going to see if I can go steal some of what he's got and become a better person. And that's just what they help us do. Have you, have you ever seen, uh, like a lot of people have like the golden handcuff syndrome you see as an employees where they get paid a lot of money and then they're stuck and they're almost in bondage. I see it as both ways. I think a lot of business owners have the golden handcuffs and they're basically handcuffed by those top producers in their company, yeah. but they're also a cancer and they're afraid to let them go. Right. And it's not really allowing them to grow because they're controlled. They're like, Hey, this guy makes all the money. He has all the freedom, even though he's infectious to the rest of the team and they don't do that. So that's one of the things that we watch for as business owners. Hey, is this person, you know, first of all, we're not going to be the golden handcuffs people. We lived that way for a lot of time in our life when we were employees, we're not, we refuse to be in that situation ever again. So going back to the heart that's what we look for not the gold medal. yeah and what's cool brad and i'll say this you see this second guy right here danny klein see yep. this guy right here what's up guys so check this out this is cool but he's 23 years old okay and literally we started training him two years ago guy calls us he just starts at a dealership right he's delivering chinese food making two thousand dollars a month remember jackie's talking years old. about people get tied in to the top producers well, he was the last producer in his store. That was like a six car. Six okay, cars he was a, a six month. car hand. Yeah. He reaches out. We train him. Yeah. Train your people. We train him. Makes 25, 30 grand a month. Starts slaughtering it. His dad dies. We love him. He's in our training program. He doesn't work for us. Okay. Sean Pollard says he's always, Sean's eyes always looking. He's an underdog. Yeah. He's a wrestler. Yeah, he's a wrestler. He's a warrior. He's a killer. But guess what? He had the heart. Sean said, hey, this kid's got heart. We need him. Wasn't about his skill. Wasn't about nothing. He had the heart. We reached out to him. Guess what? Now he's been in our business for one year now. Got a brand new Corvette, making a shit ton of money, killing it. Heart of a lion. Works in silence. Takes unbelievable care of his people. Works all day long. He's 23 years old. He sits here and he coaches these guys every day and he gets coached every day. And guess what? Ask him, Brad, ask him if I gave you a million more a month, would he come work for you? Just ask him. Anything. You tell it. him you'll give him his Ferrari. Yeah, I tell you to go fuck off. <laughs> I mean, dude, Brad, I, I, do it for the, I do it for the purpose. Well, I do it for... No, he would be an idiot. But you know what? He'd be an idiot for his, his own team and his own company. And that's what I think well, that yeah, that's, he's... That's, 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 valiant and everything but it is still stupid like Watch if i this. tell you i'll give you a million a month you fucking quit and you and know he shouldn't tell you to he'll make well, he'll make what a million tell you to we'll you should say get the fuck out of here what if you were what if you were making a million dollars a month but prin but principally you're right you should get it you should get a team that's unrecruitable yes but listen but answer what was your answer to that? yeah i was gonna say what if you were making a million dollars a month but you weren't happy would it still be worth a million what, what makes you think you wouldn't be happy here not here 
That's what but he no. said. If I yeah. fucking stole you. No, but I get your damn point. Hey, here's Love my you, point. <laughs> Build an unrecruitable sales team. Yeah, but you, dude, I'm, I told you this the other day. Dude, it's fucking not as easy as you make it seem. If you can teach someone to do it, dude, that's the value because there's people that want this. We've done it. They everywhere. don't know. They just don't know how yeah. to get it. They've tried to, to do it. They try to come in all pumped up, but they're missing something inside where like they don't stay pumped up. And these motherfuckers can see if you didn't stay pumped up, if you were full of shit, like you're running up the fucking mountain with them. So it takes a unique individual leader or it takes commitment to be one. Yes. It takes commitment to be one because again, some people, you know, and I might include myself in this, in this, in this description. Some people are like, you ever heard the old bull and the young bull? Yeah. I'm like the old bull. Yeah, you heard of the old bull, young bull? You guys heard about that yet? Why don't you tell us? Young bull's on the mountain top, looking down, sees all the cow down there. Looks at the old bull and he says, dude, let's run down there and fuck them. Fuck one. And the old bull says, no, let's walk down and fuck them all. <laughs> hey, but you know what, Brad? You know, one of the things that I know about you is this. I like that story. You're a warrior. That's yeah, your story. Yeah. You're... You're, you're, yes, you're, but the, but but there's but there's a different phase. Like you, dude. If I if I had a team and I wanted them to be fucking fired up and led, I'd fucking try to get you to do it. Why? Well, because you're willing, and that's the point I'm trying to make to people listening. You can't just want it. You gotta fucking be willing to do it. Sacrifice. Because I know you can teach someone to do it, but if they don't do what you're saying for whatever reason, they're not gonna get the results. They're gonna, they're only gonna get this type of result when they're fucking actually doing it themselves and yeah. they believe it. All the way. Yes, listen, and I'll do this for you. And hey. by the way, it's not that it's not that like it would be bad to kind of get a team like this, like a, a fucking twenty percent of this will fucking make you a shit ton of money. But 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 if you really want this, you got to freaking commit yourself as the leader to to like get rid of the people that aren't you know. Hey, you think it's dumb throwing people? Yeah, we don't need you. You know. Hey, you think this? Okay, go away. Most people won't do that, dude. Well, they got to fucking have commitment. Well, here's what I'll tell you. If somebody's watching this right now and they've made it this far in the podcast, they're the one percenter. That's it. Okay. They've made it this far. If there are, if there is someone watching this and they want to speak to me personally and they want to create a team. Okay. I have 40 warriors. Our goal is guys, what do we want? A couple hundred. Okay. This guy loves to run in a pack. He loves to run in a pack. He loves to run in a pack. You know what? If you want the biggest sales army in the world, or you just want five killers or SEAL Team 6. You want six of them. I don't care. Whatever you want, okay? I would tell you that it was, does start with you, but it starts with taking action. If you want to reach out, shoot me a text at 918-210-0254. I'll help you. I'll get on the phone with you. Number two, we have all the training on your platform, Brad, that's sick, okay? They can text too as well and get their team on the training. Lastly, I'll tell you this. That event June 4th, test me. Test me. I'm going to push you, Brad, that day. Test us. Listen, my coaches, we're going to push you that day. Well, again, I wish you would define that prior to that day. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it, guys. I don't even know what that means. Do we got to put out a syllabus? Just make sure you're there. I don't, know, I don't even okay? know what that means. You live means. right around the neighborhood, push, okay? What does Listen, that mean? What does it mean? Push me. It doesn't matter. Leave Just it up to mystery. Just show up, and you're going to see a happy. very special day with this amazing man and myself and my team, along with our other guys that are back home that are waiting. We couldn't bring the whole team. I said, hey, can I bring everybody on? You know, and Brad's like, no, uh, bring a couple. Well, I brought seven or eight. And myself, nine, whatever, I can't really count. But the idea of it is, is that we had to leave most of them behind. They were just as excited. They're just as fired up. They're ready to go to war. And you're going to meet all of them. But the biggest deal is, is that we're going to teach that day. Okay? I am going to show you some secrets on June 4th. I'll give a couple peek. I have some things that have made me more money than I know what to do with. And they don't cost me any money. They're free, Brad. Brad, you know I built my, my company organically. Right now, if somebody's watching this and they want to go to their phone and type in Google car sales training, they're going to see me right now. I paid for <coughs> none of that. Okay. We're going to teach them that day when they come. If they want reach, they want reach. They want everybody to know who they are, what they do, how great they are, how great they are, what they do and where they're at. How do I find you? Come to the event. I'm going to show you how to organically with zero money be everywhere in the world for your niche. And I'm going to teach it that day. Also, I'm going to teach how to build a team. Then I'm going to teach how to close. 
Whoever comes in there, if you sell a product, you're going to leave the best in the world. You will have the unfair advantage. You'll be so great at what you do before you leave that you'll, you'll make your competition look like amateurs. It'll be amateur hour in the rest of the world, except for in your company. That's a promise. Test me. I'm going to ruin the value of money for these people. Whatever they spend, I'm ruining it. I'm sorry for the future events. I'll apologize in I'm advance. Still, I'm still trying to figure out what does it mean by pushing me. Don't worry about that, Brad. Yeah, focus yeah, on that word, Brad. Yeah, because you guys, you guys, you guys know I, I, I left my house at 16 because my dad wanted me to mow the lawn. Mm -hmm. He was trying to push me into it. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> Brad, he is the king of all sayings, but he's ultimately the hardest worker. You know why? Because he wouldn't be where he was at without the hard work. I know your stories. I know the rejection you went through. And you're really good at saying these cute sayings now and stuff, which is amazing. But you're the <laughs> grinder of all grinders. Yeah. You are. Not really. Yes, you are. I, I disagree. I know how much rejection you got. You've forgotten. Hey. <laughs> A thousand cigars back, okay? <laughs> and we're going to come back here, and you're going to have when, a thousand of us in here, and you're going to be going crazy. When, when you weren't making the dough, I'm going to tell you, I know your grind. I know good buddies of yours. I've sat down, and I've had them tell stories about you, about how you stayed crazy about the mission, even when you weren't making money. How many people burned you? People that promised you, oh, Brad, your great idea. We're going to do that, and then stole it, or ripped it off, or didn't do anything with you, and just wanted to know your ideas. You stayed crazy. And that craziness, those stories created belief in us. And anybody watching this, you need to know that he is the real Brad Lee. And by the way, he's just a person, okay? But he's a crazy ass person. And you can build a crazy ass name for yourself as well. Ball, and everybody man. in the world. That is a true statement. They can. Yes, yeah. they can. And guess what? Just stay close to the people that are staying crazy and that don't give up. And so when Brad says he wants to get on a big cigar boat and float away, I don't believe any of that. I don't believe any of that. He'd be on the cigar boat, and then he'd get out there, Did and he'd I be like, cigar boat? this yeah. sucks. He must have. He'd be like, dude, I want to go back mm -hmm. because he's addicted to the grind. But you know what? Here's what I'll tell you is that I'm grateful that we met you and everything that you've taught us and the way you show the whole world how you do business. Our company operates at an extremely high frequency. You know how we created it? by watching you. And then we said, you know what? Let's go do something that the world's never seen. Let's do it 10 million times bigger. Can we? Yep. Yep. So the underdogs went to work, recreated, gave it everything they had. And we stay crazy. We do run like this all day long and it doesn't get exhausting. You know, what gets exhausting, losing, settling, yeah, settling, me mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Dude, listen to me. If right now you don't have real haters that hate what you're doing, you're not doing anything right. The crazy about. thing about us is that we really don't have a lot of haters. We, got a lot of we fans, honestly a lot of love us. everybody. If you ever have gotten around us, dude, we're freaking loving. You know, every time we're around, we kiss you, we love you, we hug you. This is the way we roll. Look at that smile. Hey. Ah, oh, we got that there smile. Hey, but because hey, the there's a difference between caring and truly care. We truly care about what we do, and we truly care about seeing people win because we were just them at yeah, one we time. We want to out care our competition. And out care. That's you can't That's beat a us. Skill. And you can't. You can't. You said that people are duplicate, like trying to duplicate. You know, I got that. But you can't duplicate the authenticity, the energy, the belief, the courage. You know, like you can go try, but it just it, it will never come off the way this is. You know, so it's just unreal. I'll say one last thing. If you're going to just do it for money, you're going to get your ass kicked. That's it. Okay? And most, so most will quit. Right okay. Away. You, you, you believe. You, you believe, okay? These guys believe. I believe. And we're all going to die chasing what we want. We're all going to die. Yeah, and by the way, anybody watching this, they can do the same thing. As a matter of fact, we want them to join us. Anybody watching this, the Elliott Group is your family. Whether we ever meet you or not, you're one of us. Bradley, you're one of us. Yeah, we want to meet you, but, but you're one of us and we're one of you. And although we're in different places and we live different places, we gather and we get together in a close location like this event, right? At the end of April, like this event, June 4th, you get around people that you need to be around to remind you who you're supposed to be. So you can go back home, bring that shit back home and go kick ass. And that's why we can never quit putting on these events. As cool as it is with digital, why I made that book in my hand, Brad, is because sometimes people got to get off the screen for just a second. Look down, pick up a damn ink pen, and underline a couple sayings. Write it down on a spiral notebook, and go back to how we first started. 
That's the reason why I wrote the book. I don't want New York Times shit and all that stuff. I want people to learn, okay? So that when we're gone and they bury us in the dirt, guess what? We left and we left a freaking footprint. And that's what all these guys are after. Right. Footprint. Fucking legends being made. Hey. Mm-hmm. hey. That's it. Brad. Boom. If I had oh, my oh, boom. Boom. boom again, baby. We but that I do button. want to say this is that, look, that, that is true. If anybody's watching this and you are dead Ian on zero and you're on rock bottom, I said in the beginning, our company goes back to zero every day. We have no entitlement. We have no ego. We have no pride. Pride comes before the fall. Okay. We have none of that. Okay. We're humble, but we are straight killers. We are going to win and losing is not an option. And if we fail, we learn and we attack again the next day and we recorrect. But I'll say this, if somebody's watching this and they're nobody, the, when I thought when I was nobody and I saw people making it, I, I couldn't reach out to those people because they wouldn't have nothing to do with me. If you're dead Ian on broke and you ain't got nothing, we're your family. Straight up. You're on E. You're dangerous. You need to reach out. You're the next Bradley. You're the next Andy yeah. Elliott. You're the next Elliott group. You're the next Tony Robbins. You're the next Ed Milet. You're the next Andy Frazella. You're the next guy. Just believe it and don't quit and chase that shit till you die. Get as close as you can to people that will share things with you to recreate yourself, alter your identity. And then guess what? Work hard. Don't quit. And just build a team. Shit. Like you said, if you don't know what to say, you know, something's going to come out of your mouth. Yes. And it's always going to be the wrong thing. Very often, I would say. I mean, you know, there's some people that are just naturally talented at, at coming back, but that's a few, few, few people. If someone knows exactly what to say or better than that, five things they could say. Yes. Even and better. It's, and it's, you know, at the tip of their tongue, cause they've done it so many times. There is a big difference. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, just how the customer feels just in the confidence the customer has, which builds trust. That's it. And by the way, we talk a lot about this being a great closer. Dude, you, you run closer school. So it's about closing. What do you teach about eye contact? I'm going to give you that school. Hey, I love it. I'll take it. Watch this. Close your score. Brad, Brad, when you're closing a deal, do you ever look away? No. You're eye to eye with the guy that you're talking to. You know why? Because you genuinely believe what you're saying and you want to make sure you wrap up the deal. You know what? What happens if a salesperson doesn't know what to say? They look away. You see salespeople doing that? Every time that somebody's not training with me in these master closer seminars, we run these whistles. Okay. It's called getting triggered. I'll say, Hey, like we were just going back to that objection. Hey, Andy, I got a couple more cars. I'm going to look at, I'm going to get back with you. Um, well, so boom, dude, what are you looking at? He's right here. Look at him. You should say, Hey, I totally understand. Look, let's say you had already gone and seen all those other vehicles. Brad, you got two or three of them you want to go see. Yeah. You want to go look at them? Yep. Cool. Let's act like you already went and saw them all. And then in the end, this 2018 Nissan Altima with 30,000 miles, the one that you just drove with me, you said you loved, it was the last one you went and looked at. Brad, after checking them all out, all those and this one, in the end, what would be the deciding factor on which one you probably end up purchasing? Would it be the car itself regardless of the deal? Or do you think it'd be the great deal the dealership's willing to give you? Which one? In my, in my case... The right car. Okay, cool. So even if it's ten grand more and you want to spend, you still buy well, it. Well, it wouldn't be ten grand more, but but if it was, would yes, you? I would. See, see, now you can buy whatever you want, and you need to know that that guy, he's not about the dough. But in this world, what is that? The one percent of the buyers, the other ninety nine percent are going to say, "Well, but Brad, it would the be deal. the deal." Yeah. And I would say, "Cool." So it's not a matter of if you're going to buy, right, Brad? It's when, and the win is when the deal's right, right? Cool. So if I could save you some time and money, would that upset you anyway? Would I offend you in any way? No. Thank goodness. Follow me inside. Boom. That's a word track, Brad. We teach hundreds of these word tracks in every scenario. And these guys, listen, that nobody believed they could be the best. They didn't have the gift of gab like you. I know that you were born with the gift of gab. Okay. I wasn't. I really wasn't. Well, I've seen at your place, you know, several people recite the same words the same way, same enthusiasm. Pretty impressive. That yes. means that, and all that tells me is they're doing it with repetition because nobody can learn the word track mm-hmm. one time. Nope. And that's it. And exactly. That's the reason why your platform is so wicked is because literally it's interactive. People can log in, do their training every day, five, 10 minutes or one hour. It doesn't matter. But like you said, repetition is the mother of skill. Yeah. That dream you want will only come from training. 
period. When you quit self-improving on yourself, when you're working harder on your job than you are on yourself, you're screwed. You will stop scaling. And I see these people, they run around, they're dead tired. Look at them, man. How many guys do you know right now working in the same company? They've been grinding, grinding. Maybe they had a good economy and they made a little more money, but they never really get to where they want and they work their whole life that way. And when you look at them, they're exhausted. They're not working on themselves. And that's why me getting back into the sales training space and blowing it up, people that are training with me are changing their lives forever. And guess what? If you're a skeptic, you're a skeptic on you. You're a skeptic on you. I don't know why you have these self-doubts about yourself. Like you said, most people can't make it because they don't believe. That's an issue with you because the stuff that we teach is the truth. And if you learn this, you'll be unstoppable. Nobody can stop you. What about habits, daily habits? You got any daily habits you could give these folks to yeah. make them start that journey? Yeah, holy cow. So absolutely. So I would say, number one, this is, this is just mine, exercise in the morning. The reason why it puts you in a better mood for the next 12 hours. So guess what? If everything you want to do for the rest of the day is you want to do it at a really high level, just go exercise. Get your heart rate up. Doesn't matter what it is. You don't have to be a power lifter, just bodybuilder. Just go exercise. 30 minutes, 20 minutes, make it happen. What, um, if, you second, what if you don't feel good? If you don't feel good, do it anyways. Yeah, because by the way, that's what a habit is. A habit is something that you do even when you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. That's what winners do anyways. Well, that's how, that's how you always re realize that health is pretty damn important because, you know, when you exercise, you think, oh man, this is freaking tiring and sweating and, you know, painful and all this. What if you couldn't do it? Mm. Then you'd want to do it. That's right. There's people in a wheelchair that would love to walk up the stairs and, and you take the escalator because you're lazy. It's all perspective, man. Yeah, it's That's all perspective. It. Yep. And, and, and you talk about the gratitude, which I really want to say, like, I wanted to go back to that, that in the morning, I mean, I'm grateful. I mean, I just thank God every day that thank you. Like, for real, like, I sh we shouldn't have made it this far. <laughs> okay. if, you just, if you just wake up and get in the habit of just elevate your heart rate every single day, mm -hmm. every single morning, not, not why well, take today off, every day, elevate your heart rate. You don't have to lift, you know. No. Heavy weights every day. No, but start a program. At least walk. Get your heart rate going in the morning. That's a great habit. What's yeah, and, another and one? And by the way, so that exercising, that little walk will turn into getting in the gym, working out, and doing something cool. Because progress will create more. You'll want more. You'll get hungry for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll be starving for another level. And that's cool. That will be created when you do this. Um, secondly, I was going to say, just be grateful. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, how about a thank you before we go ask for more for the day? Because I know what you're going to want. I mean, us as high achievers, right, people that compete up, we, we want more. We want more. We, we're never satisfied. The term never satisfied is how I live. Look, I've got a relationship with my wife right now. It's through the roof. I want more. It's through the roof. It's through the roof, dude. I am telling you, dude, we have sex three times a day. I'm 42 years That's old. Nuts. I'm on fire. It goes, I'm insane. <laughs> I'm craving it. And by the way, I don't know if we can say that on the podcast, but I think it's good. I think it's a healthy thing, but I think that a so lot now of people, you got all the dudes out there going, damn, dude, I don't even, I don't even get it once a week. But let me tell you this. There was a time when I was younger where we didn't. Okay. And that's the reason why I'm here. Is to it tell because you, what? It's because I decided that I wanted to have a better life and I deserved it. I gave myself permission to have it, but I knew I was going to have to earn it and work hard for it. And here's the cool thing. When you start working really hard, Brad, all this stuff starts to become normal and natural. And in the beginning, it's new. So it's a lot of friction, right? It's a lot of new habits. Dude, would they take 30, 60 days to make a habit and 60 days from now, guess what? This isn't a new habit you're trying to create. This is you. This is the new you. This is the way you operate. This is your operating new level. You're not at a cool 70 now. You're at a hot 90 and you're about to go to a 110. So be in the grateful. Another deal is I don't listen to music much, okay? I'm always studying somebody. I believe this world's my library. If I know what I'm looking for, it'll give me what I'm looking for. Brad, I study you all the time. I, I study people. I study everybody that I want to emulate and be like, okay? Because everybody's success leaves clues. Everybody, one word, one sentence could literally shift everything, could be the missing piece to my business right now that I was looking for. So I am studying and dissecting every single thing that I can. If I'm not on the phone, if I'm not doing it, my bad, doing a Zoom meeting with the dealer and closing something down or training or out um, on, you know, like traveling, it's like I am, anytime I'm studying, and while I study, I write everything down. I'm a writer. I have to write her because what's written will be retained. I write it all down. I have spiral notebooks, thousands of them. Why don't you get a up. remarkable? 
She won't let me spend the money. On a remarkable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she won't let me spend the money, man. I'm like, can we buy this? She's like, no. They I'm are, just kidding. She lets me buy whatever I want. Yeah, I, I learn better but when I'm remarkable is you do right. So so you know how like we got it's an unlimited notebook. So that's the deal. I showed her that. So what happens is I, I like the old one dollar, the one dollar spiral notebook. You know the one dollar dollar tree spiral notebook. The one dollar. To me, it brings me back to when I was 18. And it reminds me that look, there's a lot of work here to do. Sometimes we can get a little too fancy, get a little too techy, get a little too out there, and we get away from our foundation. Look, I'm a grinder. I'm a car guy for life. I, I cut my teeth on the car business. I'm not a car guy. I'm a businessman. But I will tell you this. I never want to forget how I was at 18 years old, literally standing outside. I put a lawn chair, a lawn chair, Brad, in the middle of the uh, drive. And every person that pulled in, I was like, sales or service? How you doing? You want to go to sales? You need to go to service? What, what's going on? Hey, my name's Andy, by the way. Here's my card. Thank you for being here. Look, welcome to my home. I sat out there, want something cold or hot to drink. I'm going to walk right over here with you. I took every deal. Every time, Brad, guess what? I grabbed somebody that threw my lawn chair away. Every time, snapped it in half. I had thousands of them in the garage. You know how it is when you're in a ghetto. You got all those old plastic lawn chairs with the little metal deals. I bought every one of them I could. For the first year, how I was able to make myself a hundred grand my first year in the car business was by hustle, grit, and grind with that damn lawn chair. And I talked to every customer. You know why? Because my manager told me it's a numbers game. So I just want to say, I don't get away from that grind. Here's the deal. That, that paper notebook, that cheap paper notebook, and then going to, I always want something new. She, she tells me, she's like, you just don't use it. You'll still go back and use the old paper spiral notebook. I want all this stuff because my eyes, but my grit and my foundation is just like you. Going and hustling, knocking door to door, figuring out, you know, that's the grind. That's, I'm addicted to that. Now, technology has allowed us to do some really cool stuff and grow and scale 10 times faster, but I like that grit that where I came from. When you go on vacation, do you ever just chill? Mm, we need to. We need to. She asked me to. But do you ever do that? So we have a couple of beach houses in Mexico, and she says, Andy, we need to just go chill. And, uh, and we don't. We end up working. We like to put up And revenue. you bring people? Yeah, we have like 30 or 40. But so, <laughs> so my team's very unique, uh, by the way, and I'll just... And, this is different. So my team travels everywhere with me. We, we've got 30, 30 people and we all travel together as a pack. We're a pack. So if, if you ever see us, I mean, we're all, we're moving together. That's very different. It's very weird. But to me, it's like a sports team. Okay. We don't play sports. We, we're a sales team, but we run and we train like we're a sports team. And the deal is at the end of the day, I believe that we want the world to go out there and get their best life. And we want them to know that they need to be around people that inspire them, push them. And when they're down, someone else is going to bring them up. And that's us. So we do that to each other. So we're not frauds. So we can keep, keep elevating. So we run as a team. We don't relax a lot, but by the way, I love this, Brad. I mean, look, do this, go, go, go down to wherever for three days and don't think about your business and all the lives that you change with the light speed pl platform and the cool stuff and the people you help. Try to shut them off for three days. How old are you? Uh, 42. I'll talk to you in 10 years. <laughs> I love it. Hey. Yeah, because sometimes I do want to just go. But what? I never can because when the thing goes ding, I'm like, who's that? What's needed? What do I got to do? I wonder what so-and-so is doing. You know, my kids, I'll go out and play with them on the beach after about, I don't know, two hours. Yeah. They don't really want me to sit there and play with them. They want to play. They want to run. They want to do their thing. It's it's saddening for me because I want them to, like, want me 24-7, but they don't. So then what do you do? Well, then I go in, I watch a little TV, and then sure enough, I'm back to thinking about biz within freaking six hours of chilling. That's it. Kids get independent so fast. Um, but we but do, you, we, you work out on vacation. Yes. Every day, every day. You don't, you don't take a day off. We take off on the weekends. Um, we take off Saturday and Sunday and, uh, you know, we don't want to, but we do because it allows our body to rest, but we always want to work out just because it puts us in a state. Last time I was at your place, it was crowded. I said, dude, what about all, I mean, I thought we were in a pandemic. This was a while back. You said, what are you talking about? We don't, we don't buy that. And nobody in the place had a mask on. Everybody was, you know, nobody got sick. Everybody was just fired up, screaming yeah. at the top of their yeah. lungs and rocking the whole two days. Has anybody, by the way, has anybody ever said, hey, I got sick there? No. 
Yeah, because like I was thinking, damn, dude, I was I did not want to be in a crowd. I was like shit, and and I couldn't avoid being close to people. And I thought for sure, man, oh boy, I, you know, it takes fourteen days. So I was just hoping that you know, fourteen days after I came to your deal, nothing was going to happen. Nothing happened. And yes, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. And I'm thinking, damn. I mean, you know, the health gratitude that people. I think fail to have is massive. Like, have you ever woke up and just not felt right? It's just like, I don't feel right. You know, I don't feel energetic. I don't feel enthusiastic. I yeah. just feel, uh, you know, as soon as that happens, I always think to myself, see, that's why you get your ass up and work out. That's why you freaking appreciate health. Cause if you are not healthy, man, you don't feel right. Life is not the same. Yeah, that's it. And by the way, like these live events that we put on, so our digital platform is sick. It's wicked. We're growing like crazy. Um, but we love the live events. You know, we've even talked about people have always said, you know, why do you do the live events? You make just, you, you can grow the digital. We're going to grow the, we're growing the digital like crazy. Well, I would recommend you don't ever stop the live. People no. love those. Well, that's the deal is that we literally, when I say the term, my, my wrist right here, it says total recreation. Okay. Total recreation. Every single, Brad, this is crazy. Every single one of these people that come out and train with us, every single one of them, number one, they go back home and make way more money. That's the first thing. Money goes through the roof. Secondly, okay, we're all about winning in all the areas of life, not just in the dough. So what happens is they go back home and they treat their wives better, their husbands better, they treat their kids better, and they're more grateful. They quit, they quit being ungrateful about anything because we teach what you teach. And by the way, we all need to be taught it, Okay. It's, 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 it's disgusting to see somebody ungrateful. Okay? And a lot of them plug back into the, into the lives. Oh man, they go insane. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, um, everybody goes back home and guys that were weighing 300 pounds, we see them come back every quarter. These guys, when they come in, we have an 80%, 90% rebook rate. You know what that means? 500 people in the room, 80 to 90% of them rebook, pay for their next seminar on the spot right there. Cause they're so blown away. We change the seminars every single month. It's so cool. But when we see these people 90 days later at, a, at an event, three months later, number one, they come up and they're like, remember I was at 70 grand last time? Dude, I'm at 260. You know, they're showing their pay stubs, but also they're down 70 pounds. Yes. You know what I mean? They're so freaking happy, man. Just cool. Love that stuff, man. Love his buttons and his gadgets. The old sound effects. Well, I don't know why my face is shiny, but listen. This has been a wonderful morning. I want everybody listening to this to get at least go check this out. His number one is YouTube channel because that's that's where you can see him here. Andy Elliott. Yeah, you'll get to know me. And by and the there's way, there's a lot of free content on there. Tons of it. Yeah, absolutely free. So go check out his YouTube content it, it, on YouTube. You just type in Andy Elliott to you, you type in Andy Elliott. You type it in wrong, it's going to find me. Two L's, two T's. Yeah, two L's, two T's. You type it in. And by the way, on every video, I say my cell phone number. So anybody can text me and reach out to me. That's dangerous. Hey, I'm going to tell you this right now. We grew our business, Brad. I want to tell you this in 2019, by the way, this doesn't matter, but I'll just show you consistency pays off because I know we're ending here. So anybody watching this, it's kind of like going to the gym after three weeks, raising your shirt, not seeing the six, six pack and saying, man, come on. I didn't get into my training story, but when I pivoted out of being a GM, I made 2.5 million my last year as a GM. Okay. I quit. I quit and I went home and I said, we're pursuing the training company, baby. Let's roll. Guess what? I shot YouTube videos for one year for free and didn't make a dollar. You know why? Because I wanted to give enough content out there to people so people could see that I was real and who I was and not hide behind some course. Be some YouTube ad pops up. I'm Andy Elliott. I made 700 grand. If you want to know how to do it, buy the course. No. I said, you know what? I'm going to go out and put content out there so people can see who it is that they're learning from. These people made so much money off the free content. Guess what? They already owe me money. So the deal is, is that they got that. Now, by the way, that's the baby food. We call the YouTube, the baby food. We put the big, big daddy training on the platform, but long story short is everything that's free, right? We did on YouTube went one year. And then the second one, I just said, Hey, all right, year two, let's start, let's start opening a business. Guess what? We had our business since 2011, but we decided now here we go. We started a master closer seminar, boom, filled the room with a hundred people first month. I said it on YouTube, master closer seminar, 997. You want to come with me? Here we go. First time I ever offered anything. Boom. We filled it within like one week. Next thing you know, course, we sold a thousand courses overnight. We're the real deal. We're not hiding behind some course. How'd that make you feel? Real. R-E-A-L. 
That's right. But I want to say something, That's why Brad. Quote something that I love what you said. And one of the things, and by the way, I watched this a long time ago, but one of the reasons why we've always attracted to Brad, right? And why we're here with Brad, and why we believe in Brad. Brad, you're a leader and why we believe in you. And I want you to remember this. I know you're playing on your phone. Okay. I'm asking Grant when when the first 10X was. He's going to tell you it's 2017. You I know. know it. You might be right. Yeah. yeah, going in 2018, just like I said. Okay. Um, but I want you to know this, though, that you. Brad, you asked, Grant asked you, he said, Hey, um, so, so Brad, how, how do you get this passion? Where do you get it from? And you go, because I love it. He goes, don't give me that shit. He goes, you like the money. You like the money. And you go, yeah, yeah. But I didn't start making money until the last couple of years. The first 15 years, I didn't make any money. He's like, yeah, but you wouldn't do this now. You wouldn't do this now. You wouldn't come in on the weekends and do this now. And you go, dude, I did this forever. Not making money. Cause I so love the first doing one was six years ago. There we go. Done. 2016 or 2017, 2018, yeah, 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 yeah. just like I said. No big deal, Brad. Never. Well, back then, back then, I got to tell you, because someone just said this the other day, you know, about when I was in, a, I guess, a Range Rover or some sort of car with him talking about that. He's, they kind of said the same thing. They alluded to the same thing. And when I look back, I think, you know, what, what was the difference? And the difference then versus now is back then I had what's called imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. yep. imposter. I've heard yeah, of it. Still doing the work. Yeah. Yeah, no. but I had imposter syndrome, and I'm like, who the fuck it. am I? I? I shouldn't even be sitting here. Yeah. But I didn't realize that I was somebody, you know, and I am somebody. And now I know mm -hmm. what the fuck I am. Totally. I didn't then, and that's the, that's the shift that you see. But, you but, to be entitled, or you have the opposite side, right? That's what you're saying. Well, but, again, I didn't have any self-worth. And see, when people <laughs> want to make more money, dude, the first thing they got to do is raise their self-worth. Because you're never going to outperform your own self -worth. Huh? No, that that's amazing. That's a bomb. Drop that shit. Drop that bomb. Brad, but one of the things that you've always had, though. By the way, we don't have the bomb, so we have to, to do the build a sales team. Brad, you got heart. Look, everybody that's watching this right now, they're not watching this because you're going to give them something that's going to go help them close another deal later, even though that may happen, okay? But you got heart, man. You're real. The real Brad Lee. How many other YouTube, right? I'm just going to say, like, what if I was the real Andy Elliott now? How many other you like Instagram people Jesus are the God. real COVID? Hey, remember, remember that, Brad? Dude, sneezing's the new shit in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised hey. everybody's not going like that. No, nah, man, we're done. We're, we're just, hey, but I want to tell you something. One of the deals is, is that that's kind of been his system. Like, you know, your heart has always been amazing. Right, honey? And by the way, hey, real quick, I want to hand this to my wife. How do we, how do we hire? Brad, watch this. Anybody watching this right now, I want to tell you how we hire. No, because I have a hundred people a day try to try to reach out and they they want to come work for our company. I mean, 20 years experience. John Maxwell trainers. Every trainer you can imagine wants to come work for us. Baby, tell them how we hire. Well, the the crazy thing is, you know, we have a team now and we have an amazing team. Um, it was the hardest thing for us to do. Starting with Sean just was hard for us. We were so proud of our little business and we weren't sure that anybody was going to really fill in and believe like we believed. So the first thing that we look at is somebody's heart. You know, we look at, you know, if they have the same believability, we don't look at the skill that they carry. You know, we don't look at what they're doing now, but we look, I mean, we're a training company. We look at what they can become with us and that's how we shine. And if you were listening to Ian, you can feel that passion behind what he was talking about because you know, he has a heart. You speak to every one of our guys, every one of our, you know, team members and you'll feel the same exact way we hire because of the heart so yeah and listen i've got a team of 40 men brad that's a bomb real quick guys. that's a bomb oh! for mama jacqueline oh! hey oh! hey and by the way i'm gonna tell you this she's the ceo she's bad to the bone bad. look hey hand him that phone brad i want you to look at this man right here ryan ryan rasmussen stand up bud stand up look at this big sexy guy right here check this out hey i want to show you something i hired this guy a year ago that was him okay. oh, that was him hey he couldn't even talk brad you know what he was yeah, committed in attitude. his mind. He's going to have the best attitude right. ever and, and the you know best what? heart. Guess yeah. what happened? I'm going to tell you this. For anybody out there right now, you want to build the best sales team in the world. You know what you do? You hire people who believe what you believe. You believe what they believe. They'll work for you with blood, sweat, and tears and not for a check. These guys make a shitload of money, Most but they never asked about the money 
when they came to work. But then what, what you got to do, though, when, when you get with a team and Andy finds some guys, what you got to do when you build a team is then you got to still be able to go back to the groundwork. You still got to be able to make sales calls. You still got to go in there and motivate and inspire your team. The one thing that Andy and Jackie do is they're right there in the battle with us every day. Andy's it. on the phone. He's doing the work. He's right. on the sales floor. He, we're building the building together. We're fil- figuring out ways to help each other. And it starts with, yeah, there's no entitlement. There's no ego in the company. No matter what Andy does, he's still reaching out to guys that are reaching out for a dollar or a free product. You got to still be willing to get in the fight with your team. If you're still willing to get in the fight with the team and show your team that you have the heart, well, listen, that's how you build the team. You got to keep them going. So he got us, he got them. And what we did was, all we did was we we kept growing together. We kept showing each other that there was a next level. And by the way, I've never been pushed by anybody the way that Andy and Jackie push you. They figure out different ways that they try to get you to the next level and they stretch you. You know, and they stretch you and they show you that there is a different level inside of you, that you can have it all. And if you stick to the plan, you will get better and better and better. And they push you every single day. Yeah. And this guy, this guy, I mean, if you watch the sales call, we just used to record all of our sales calls. Andy would be, you know, we do 20 hours a day and we'd be recording all of our sales calls. And I mean, now he teaches how to do the sales calls. But I mean, if you look at him, that was a year ago. I don't know if you could put that up on your you know, screen and all this good tech, but that was a year ago. And we were just sitting here at breakfast and we were like, Holy crap, man. Just look at the way he looks. Total speaks, recreation. You know, yeah. sounds. We call it total recreation, but not just about us. It's about like the people out there because it's great when it's with us, but our salespeople across the country, our owners across the country have done what Ryan did in this picture and just recreated. And some of them just had to wake up, man. Some yeah, Brad, and every single day up, we've got up, owners. I mean, down. I'm just telling you this. If you're an owner out there of a business or you're a business leader, you should reach out to us because the first thing that has to happen. What would they do? Text you? Yeah. Text me. Dude, How? he Why? answers over a thousand texts text a day. Well, you just he's never not on his phone. And you go 918-210-0254, and they should have it down by now because we said nine times, 918-210-0254. You text me, number one, total recreation starts. Don't you damn pick up that text. Don't even pick up the phone. Don't cross if, the line. If you're not going to be willing to change, okay? But if you got the sack, or if there's a woman watching this, and she wants to be a savage like my wife and go to the next level, and I'm just telling sack. you this. Hey, she's, she's a that. beast. Guess what? <laughs> Here's what I'll tell you. You got about 10 sacks. Hey, yeah. everything will change, Brad. Everything. And you know what? That's what it's all about, man. Finding some people who are real, that are really stand by your side. And guess crazy. what? I know this sounds crazy. You know I don't advertise, right? You know, Brad's keep telling me I got to advertise. And you're right, I do. But the one thing that I'm afraid of is I've always been afraid to lose a, a connection with my people. All, look, we've got a big event going on. June 4th, me and Brad Lee... Scottsdale, Arizona, that 918-210-0254, if you want to go, my wife just put 30 new seats in there. So we've got 30 more spots. Text, there's three different seat levels. One of them is just going to the 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Scottsdale, Arizona, 9 to 4. Me and Brad are going to be teaching closer. It's the ultimate closer summit, how to build a sales team, how to close any deal, everything. But then also you get VIP with Brad on the high ticket seat where literally you go out to dinner with Brad and you're going to hang out with them and spend time with them. Why do you say it with Brad? Because one of the things is I'm on your platform. They yeah, may yeah, want. They get to go to dinner with us. Us. It is us. But the idea of it is, is that they're. You're, you're going to have me with fucking 30, du- 30 dudes at a restaurant and you'll be fucking no. gone. No, no, no. Yeah. Brad. You'll be back making Brad, sales calls. You're like, Brad, Brad listen. Brad. Yeah. Brad, I'm I told gonna, you with Brad. Brad, you're entrepreneurs. Since our last <laughs> podcast, you're entrepreneurs in every Every real estate, financial, everything you can imagine are reaching out right now. They're breaking. Re- loan officers are killing it. Look, we've taken so many of your people and we're coaching them and they're breaking every record. It's unfair. It's unfair. And I'm going to tell you this, this event that we're doing to get in a close proximity and a high frequency with people like us, that June 4th event, if you text that 910, uh, 918, uh, where does the O come from? 918-210-0254. Brad, I mean this when I say this. They show up, their life will be changed forever. Forever. They'll never be the same again. But one of the biggest deals is, is that it's guys like you that inspired guys like me that went out and took a step with no money, no guarantees, no nothing, but seeing that you did it. And guess what? Since you did it, I can do it. Guy broke a four-minute mile, then they all started breaking it. That's what happened. And all these people out there that got these low limited beliefs and these lids and these glass ceilings, they're fake. Like you said, if you don't realize your self-worth, right, like you're not worth it. But the deal is, is that you can't just want to make money. You got to want to make an impact and bring value to the marketplace. We bring value. 
Absolutely. This mark, this podcast brings value to people's lives. It's not just entertainment. It brings value. There's a lot of people that need to take care of their home, right? Right? Your wife, you take great care of her. You're a great father. You're not one dimensional, Brad. You're not just a businessman. There's a lot of people watching this right now that are business women, uh, business women and businessmen, mm-hmm. and they're really good at what they do, but they neglect their families. They and I'm not okay with it. Yeah. And guess what? They can fix that. They can have it all. So let's talk about that for a moment. Mm-hmm. So are you supposed to go home and get down on your hands and knees and stare at your little kids for, what, two hours intently? What are you supposed to do? How do you do that? Put your phone down. Everybody can have their own answer. My deal is, it's easy. One hour. Meaningful is what it is. Put your phone down. No distractions. And actually just pay attention. Listen to what it can be 10 minutes, Brad. It doesn't have to yeah, be. Yeah, it can oh, be 10 okay. minutes. <laughs> hey, hey. It's and, just a meaningful. I hey, and by the way, Brad, I'm going to tell you this. Like our kids, they're entrepreneurs mm-hmm. at eight yeah, and nine crazy. and 11. What are you saying to them when your phone's off and you're looking at them? I don't talk to them like they're children, by the way. Wow. It's a little bit different. Like, uh, so How old I, are they? Uh, six, nine, and 11. I got the ages wrong. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. He usually it seems like a lot of families they go home and they, they put their phone away and they try to talk to their kids and all they're saying is you know put that down leave your sister alone you guys clean up that mess no don't get me wrong we also have that we are human and we have those conversations as well but there's a lot of things like uh, we take our kids in and they see us at work and they see how we talk to our people they see how much we care we talk about our business we talk about i mean we bring them around the team every single one of our team i mean they're like our family. Ian takes our kids shopping, you know, whatever. It's like they all go out and do things. We trust them that way that we're that close. But they know the heart that we have, and they see hard work. They don't just see mom come home at the end of the night and make dinner. They see me, you know, on the ladder building stuff at the office or talking about business or numbers or checks or whatever it is. They're involved. And so they start thinking like entrepreneurs at a very young age, and they know how much we care about our people. So in turn, they care about – they start caring about their friends. They start caring yeah. about teachers. They start caring about yeah, the elderly leaders. they they have that heart in them already instilled yeah. at a young age yeah yeah they're they're all leaders i uh, mean the uh, way that the, what's that are they doing fitness oh they're, they're yeah they're, they're running around crazy zoo. but like when they're in the office i mean they're yeah, running around sports though. they're they're not yeah, on they're, they're not like you know she said that they know hard work i mean because they're watching them it's almost like they're they're just like little versions of us, you know, they're watching them. So they're mirroring them like Ian, her son just won Fountain Hills kid of the year. He's like, just, he's going crazy, right? He's Ian also just like me, but like that kid plays with such heart, doesn't let kids get bullied. He has conversations with Andy and it's like, they're talking business, uh, which I think is really cool. And I look up to because, you know, he brings him in and he really talks to him. Like he's like, you know, a partner, you know, not like, Hey, do this, do this. It's like, Hey, let me show you why I watched Andy paint a picture for him the other day at my brother's baby shower and he was painting a picture of why he could go this way and do that and that's his choice or why he could go that way and do that and that's just like in business you still have a choice you can go do this way you can go that way so he gives him a choice he tells him that there's going to be things that consequences that come from every choice that he has and the little girls follow they do the same thing but they're really just little entrepreneurs. That's like really the best way to say it about yeah. them. You know what I mean? And we don't, and we make them earn stuff. Like we don't baby them. Like they don't live like these kids that have everything. Um, I, I think a lot of parents make the mistake. Like when they, like I came from nothing, Andy came from nothing. And when you do, you know, decent in life, you know, you're like, I want to give my kids everything I didn't have. And that's the biggest mistake as an Ooh. adult you can have is giving your kids everything is the worst thing you can do for them. Like, I think that a lot of times we do so much for them that they don't value. They don't learn hard work. They don't learn how to appreciate things. And then as a parent later in life, you see them as a grown adult. You're like, I gave you everything. Well, yeah, you gave them too much. And that's why they're not where you wanted them to be. That's so. a mom. That's, That's a bomb. bomb. Oh, Brad's like, I get to call the bombs. But when mama's got the mic, Sorry. we we drop bombs. Hey, Brad, but also I wanted to give you something. I want to say something. Hey, how to create company culture. Okay? Everybody has to believe in a mission, right? Yep. yep. Okay. I'm going to ask this question, Brad. Do you believe in us? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Do people out there believe in the company that they work for? Well, That's a lot it. of times, no. Exactly. Whose fault is it? The leader. It's the leader. That's right. Brad, if you look at my wrist right here, right? Everybody see this. You can see this on my entire team right here, okay? This right here said, the devil replied, you can't withstand the storm. Okay, the devil, the devil whispered. My bad. Obviously, it's right here. The devil whispered, 
you can't withstand the storm. And it says, the warrior replied, I am the storm. Nobody's going to beat us. Nobody. You can't get in our way. If you do, we'll bury you. We don't break apart. How do four oxes fight? They back in, ass in, horns out. They can take on a thousand lions. But once the ox gets spread out, they pick them off one by one. Our team runs as a pack, okay? And I want you to know this. As you're looking at this pack, these guys, they'll do anything for you. They love you, too. You've done a good job, and I talk well, highly of you. But well, are you going to bring the pack to your keynote in Miami? Yeah, we're going. Are we going to Miami? Yeah. Let's yeah! go to the fucking Miami, guys! Boom, baby! Woo! Like, yeah. like, like we. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get rid of a speaker or two just to allow you up there because, dude, I want to bring value to this audience, and you, you guys are pure fucking value. Good. Thank well, you, every single one of us Thank will you, be Brad. there in Miami. When is it? April. But I've never seen anything like it, dude. This, 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 this like, like, like I go to a lot of events. There's always a speaker. Blah blah blah. If you fucking figure out some way to get these motherfucking criminals. <laughs> fucking running around the audience while oh, you know and and, and yeah. like at the at the i I'm picturing like you say you, you do exactly your thing because right, right. people are going to want to hear from you da, 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 and you're saying what you do and you do what you do and then somehow some way like they're some lined up who the fuck knows right. maybe they're in the crowd they're right. on the we table got it yeah, handled. Or don't worry about it listen but, but dude listen there's gonna be a lot of business owners there and and there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna go dude i want his fucking team because, dude, I, I know a few people. We won't name names. Their team appears to be like your team, but they're not really like your team. No, of they're, course. They're, they're they acting do. like your team. And they act pretty well like your team, but they're not really like Well, I like, like to challenge team. that, Brad. Come to one of our events. Everybody that comes to our events, when they leave, they're like, you guys are much better in person, and they really see where our heart is and everything else. Yeah, yeah but that's my point. My point is there's a lot of companies that'll be there that are going to be like, fuck, that's the real, that's how, I want that for myself for sure. real. Good, well, whoever's going to be there Everybody the their dog is going to fucking line up afterwards and say, dude, how do we get you for our uh, team leadership? Getting a team that's fucking bought in, we love every it. company needs Done. that. Listen, if they got the courage to raise their hand, Okay, mm -hmm. and say I want to win. Done. We'll have them take out every single person in their niche. Everyone. Because, dude, you know how many companies out there are not like this mm -hmm. that well, need to be more than are. Yeah, ninety nine percent of them aren't. And, and, here's I, the goal. and if I said to you, Andy, be honest, tell the truth. If you had to give this person the information to determine whether or not they were going to end up in a in a peak state and win at whatever they're doing. Do they need a team like this? Absolutely. Period. Period. Like, dude, if someone came up to me, I'd say, dude, you got to, that's the hardest one, but you got to get a team like that and you're fucking done. Yeah. It's you over. You can do anything. Yes. And here's the goal is that, look, number one, find what you want, get as close as possible to it, have, have the mentorship come in, create it on your own, make it better, go kick ass. And then some tactical things that I think you might want to point out is like, for example, when you hot, when you hire people, mm -hmm. see, when I talk to people, one of the questions I ask is, do you feel lucky? And some people believe it or not, will go, uh, I ain't very lucky done. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want nobody that doesn't think they're fucking lucky. Yeah. We got to delusional like you're all, belief. You're already in the wrong direction. Uh, right. I tell people, look, dude, I can help you fucking not drown, but you got to swim towards me. Right. So, if you don't feel like you're lucky, beat it. But that's really my only question. Sometimes I have like HR people up upstairs and they'll be like, okay, so uh, Brad, this is so-and-so and they're going to be looking at this position. I'll be like, how you doing? And then all of a sudden they're all nervous. And I'm thinking maybe they're nervous because it's a job interview. So I look, okay, I'm past that. Then I said, do you feel lucky? That's my only question. What other, sh what other questions should I be asking? Well, okay, so number one, I'm just going to ask this. How do you hey, know this uh, motherfucker well, had heart? Hey, what did you do during COVID? I yeah. fucking worked my ass off. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Because during so, COVID. So what if they said, oh, I got laid off like everybody Well, then else. I don't even know. Number one, you wouldn't be sitting in front of me. Yeah, Because exactly. I don't have time yeah. for that, so okay? Who, who would filter out the, the people before they got in front of you? Number one, I hire my own people along with my wife. Secondly, when we feel like that somebody is right for our company, I have a team meeting yeah. with my team, and I – talk to them about this individual and why I would like for them to come in because when they come in, they are brothers now. And we try to talk them out of working for us, honestly. Yeah, well, I, was say, I was waiting for We'll you to scare say that. you not to work for us. I was for waiting us. for you to say that. Yeah. Yeah. We want to see if you're a fighter. If, if she says like, hey, you can't work for us and then you just go hit the ground running like you were a quitter in the first place. Listen, the last guy that works for us right now 
He's a killer, okay? And by the way, he came to a seminar, destroyed it, just absolutely smashed yeah, just, all these stuff. Out. He's killing it. And guess what? I said, uh, he goes, I'm not leaving. I'm like, yeah, get your ass out of here. Go home. And I left. And he's like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. He canceled his plane flight and stayed at the place. I said, did get out of here. He slept outside for a week. Yeah, he, he followed he, me around the building for three days straight. And I pretended like police. he wasn't. He was just chasing me, chasing me to talk to me. I'm like, listen, you don't want to work for us. This is hard. Like it, it, nobody's going to nobody makes it. I mean, you're not going to make it. I, I gave him every excuse in the world to not want to work for us. I mean, that's just how, how it goes. She said, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. Our goal is we want to see if you're a quitter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we don't have people that quit on our company. I've made some bad hires in the past. In the very, very beginning, a couple years back, hiring a couple guys who are like, I want to make money. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like that because that's a car business attitude, right? Yeah, you want to make money? And guess what? Those guys, that's it. It's all they want is a paycheck. And the minute the check in right or they're entitled constantly or you want to do a change, they eye roll you in a meeting, you got to put up with it. No ways. These guys don't eye roll us. We, you know what I'm talking about, too. You know, Guess what? That entitlement is death. Get it out of your company. Hire a team. And by the way, if you do train with us, Brad, we will give you an unrecruitable team. Unrecruitable. We will show you how to develop everything that you want. Hey, now look, it's April 29th and 30th in Miami. And what's this called? The MBA? The weekend MBA. We're, we're showing people what you would learn in an MBA program or 10 years in two days. Nice. Done. That's our kind of training right there. Done. Yeah. Well, we'll be there. We'll be there. I'll bring my whole team. We're done. We're there. Well, you got to, you got to, you got to just, I mean, do what you want, but you got to figure out how to incorporate the whole fucking. Well, Look at the boss. She'll bad, handle bad, it. Bad. We, we're we're ready for anything. Anyway, can't, one thing that Andy broken. consistently does is just put us in, you know, arenas and under pressure wherever. I mean, that's part of our job. So yeah, we don't, we'll really have this deal so at. dialed in. Don't even worry no. about it. Whoever shows up, just bring a diaper. Yeah, just bring a diaper, yourself. bring so a helmet. Us, hey, if, a month know. and a half for us is like a year. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, we got 38 of things going on. Dude, if you said it was tomorrow, if he said it was in an hour, we'd be there in an hour ready to roll. Well, look, here's what people need to do. They need to go to the weekend MBA to get their ticket to this thing I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But June 4th, that's the one I really want people to show yeah, up. Yeah, the, so the, if you're coming to the weekend NBA, we'll see you there. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to the weekend NBA, it's before June 4th. If it was me, I'd do both. Yeah, both. I'd do both. Why not go to Florida, do the NBA? Speed and of then growth. June 4th is a one day event, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Literally, it's me and you all day long. When they're there with me, it'll be my, mostly you all day long. Well, because I'll just be no, listening. no, no, Brad. Yeah. No, Brad's <laughs> got that wrong. Brad is going to be out front with me all day crowd long surfing. from nine to four. We're going to strip Brad naked, yeah. throw him in the crowd. <laughs> naked, Woo, Brad. You're going to see Brad at a level he's never been at. Guys, let me tell hey, you a secret and, about, and about you Brad. You guys might get elbows to the face. That's good. I love We're it, ready Brad. It won't be the first yeah, time. That motivates us. Hey, I want to say something about Brad, and this is important. Brad, when he's around high energy, when he's around that infectious winning, yeah. he turns on another gear. When he's at a lot of speaking events where people are like, wah, wah, wah. oh, next speaker. He has a, his pose clap. down. Brad. He has his pose down. But look at his pose has changed with us around. He right. smiles like right. his pose is no longer. Look at the lion. Yeah. Look at the lion. Look at the lion, guys. That's it, baby. That's it. Look at the look at love, Brad, man. Hey, but hug him. Brad's like, you guys mess up my mic one more time. Brad, listen, <laughs> life in perfect. It doesn't have to be. This doesn't need there. to be planned out. You know what it is? It's a bunch of lions getting together, destroying sheep. It's about us killing mediocrity and crushing average. And you know what it takes? It takes craziness yeah. to make like that crazy. happen. You got to get ready to go to war. Because if you don't go to war, someone's going to kick your ass. Mm -hmm. That's it. You better be really good at what you do. You better have a team. Would it be fair to say you guys are competitive? Oh, Straight. Ah, oh, what's that yeah. mean? Are we going to do a push-up contest right now or something? Usually when people say that, then we're doing, we're no, doing some type of contest. A tequila shot contest. <laughs> hey, we Listen, we'll do either. It doesn't matter. We're fine. I mean, whatever. You, with all that fitness you guys doing, you drink or no? Very rarely. Rarely. Very rarely. It's so, rarely. Well, then why do you think we don't have anything to celebrate yet, Brad. Well, we we got to take over we the can world. We keep up with you. We just think we'd probably have one or two shots, get so hammered, you know we'd you, act so crazy, you'd probably <laughs> end it. the whole yeah, place you apart. Know, you know how good you feel when you wake up and you didn't drink the night before and you did the right amount of water and you worked out and it's like, this is just another day. You feel fucking as soon as you wake up. Boom. It's yeah. every day. Yeah, well, after tequila, it don't feel that way anymore. Good. <laughs> well, if you ever want to take us on, not and there's no chance. She's Mexican, so she's, mm -hmm. I mean, she's in the cartel, she'll so 100. she'll try you on she'll for anything. Yeah. 
but but I, I do want to say this that uh, that Brad, literally, when I say this, if anybody right now wants to know how to win, it's never been easier. It really has. It, it just listen to me. Nobody cares when your company, your sales team, your people deal with people. Do they wow them? Yeah. Are people like, oh my God, I can't believe this lady or this guy was so nice on the phone. You know what? They love their job. Oh my God, they loved what they were doing. Matter of fact. They did it as if they weren't even getting paid. Like it was their dream to do this. Mm -hmm. That's what we have. And that's what you should have in your company. And if you don't, you as the leader have the power to fix it. And let me say this, for anybody out there that's a, that's a loner, that's in a business by themselves, and they don't have a company right now, like me and my wife did in the beginning, I would give you the courage to be at an event like this and be around people that aren't frauds, that are real that are really going out and doing the shit. I'm, I'm going to watch this in five years, just like I watched you with Grant five years ago. And I'm telling you, man, you're totally recreated. You're a different human being. Your mindset is different. Your skill is different. Your courage is different. And guess what? You still don't do it for money. You do it because you love people, Brad. You love fucking people. And that's why my team's crazy about you and me as well and your wife and your children and everybody watching this. Because you're real. Yeah. He's the Brad real Brad Lee. Woo! That's, That's a fucking ball, That's baby. Ball, baby. Oh, hey, by the way, look, let's give this to Brad. Give Brad one of these. We, only our team, only our team wears these. Hey, honorary member. That's my bracelet. Dude, dude thank you. This is a badass saying, I got to say. That's it. It's yours now. Now you can have it. Put it on your desk, and one of these days, you're feeling a little bit down. Put that on there, and guess that what happens? a little small. No, just open it up, put it on there, squeeze it on. Look, you're done. What we do for insurance agents that are already licensed, Mm -hmm. we basically, assuming you can come in and and, and kick some ass, build your team for you in a big way. That's it. Like, I I, I don't want to name names, but we have a couple of uh, insurance agents that came with me, decided to start, jump from wherever they were. And they ended up, uh, you know, they're, they're quite happy. Let's just say, dude, their overrides are massive. The other day I just said, the other day I just said to one of them, how many people have I given you? And she said, you know, a couple hundred. And I said, no, 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 not how many are writing. How many people have I given you? And she said, yeah, a couple thousand, couple thousand people. So folks, what, you know what that taught me? That taught me is I need more people because people can't handle thousands of people. So if you're in the insurance space right now and you're listening to this podcast, I'm telling you right now, if you got a license, I'd be texting that number. Mm-hmm. Again, 712-409-7325. I'd text that number and I would freaking jump on board as fast as you could because I'm telling you, nobody in this business builds your team for you. Yes. And we got the highest compensation model. Yep. And we've got the freaking best training and we've got the best leadership and we've got the best culture. Our events are off the chain. Mm -hmm. Like people, people always in these industries give out a bunch of free events, dude. People have kept wondering why we're not charging for our events. Like we got, I I bring in a lot of big name speakers. Andy's already a big name speaker. I'm a big name. Well, I wouldn't say big name, but we're well known in certain certain circles. Yeah. But, but you don't get that with these other, these other, agencies you know you get lower comp and i'm talking about ridiculously lower so if you're in the insurance space right now your comp model i'm telling you right now was more than likely ridiculously low and you're just not aware of it yeah and brad can i say one thing i can make your pay probably double to triple that it, that it currently is if nothing else changed i would just elevate your pay levels Brad, I want to talk about culture for a minute. How a person thinks, you always say this, mindset, skill set, habits, right? Look, Brad, you talk about that little bomb button you hit all the time. The only way to wealth is through self-education. Am I correct? That's right. Okay, so if somebody got in this and they didn't even want to sell insurance for a long time, but they wanted to get in close proximity to winners, learn how to sell, close, influence, persuade, and be great, and be around great people, develop a great mindset, would this be the way? 100%. Dude, that's it. Listen, hey, and by the way, once you get in, you drink the Kool-Aid, you see the money that's involved, you get around winners, you're never going to want to go back. You you know who I'm looking for? Brad, I'm looking for some new leaders. I need some new leaders. If you're watching this right now and you look in that damn mirror and you say, man, dude, I I believe I'm great. I really do, man. I think I truly believe I just need someone to be by my damn side and I will be great. Okay. I am telling you, you join me and my crazy ass will make you a savage. And that's it.
If they'll have the courage to text and get in and get their damn license, they come over to my side and then we go to war with you, Brad. It's over, dude. This is war. So why do you think people still won't help themselves like this? Like, in other words, why not? Why are people afraid to sell? Why are people afraid to jump on things like this? Why are there going to be a big percentage of people that do not text? They do not do anything. Matter of fact, they might have already even shut the episode off going, all they're trying to do is get me to sell something. Why do you think people are like that? Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't understand the system. Okay. They don't understand it. Um, You know, our boy, Andrew Tate, right? He got arrested. He already told her, he talks about the uh, matrix. Okay, dude, you talk about the system, whatever you want to call it. Okay, look, a lot of people are average and they don't know how to get out, Brad. When who's, you got, say, who's got lower blood pressure? Well, Brad has a little lower blood pressure because coffee's for closers and I drink a little more coffee. Okay, but I will say this. I run like this even when I wake up, but I, I will say we are doing blood pressure con- competitions. Everything's competitive, man, when you're around the right people. And that's what pushes us. That's yeah. what pushes you. That's what gets you to the next level. But I don't want it to, again, I mean, dude, so far I'm looking like, dude, this 24 minutes of straight commercial sounding. I don't want to, I don't want to dropping bombs to no, be it's commercial. it's 24 minutes of straight opportunity. I know, but I want to, I want to ask some questions. So there Go. might be some people listening that will listen to answers that, that explain deficiencies. Ask, ready? Why like, won't like, they get it? Like, for example, why can people listen to a deal where there's it clearly isn't a scam because there's no money involved and they still don't believe, they still don't pull a trigger, they still don't jump. You said because they don't think they deserve it. Yes, and by Brad, they need to alter their identity. Yeah, but well, you think they don't think they deserve it. What does I, that mean? That means this, you'll never out earn your own self-worth. That means if you look in the mirror and you don't believe that you're worthy of being a millionaire or you don't believe that it's capable, if you don't think you can run a four, mil, four minute mile, you can't. Okay, it's physically impossible. So how do they fix that? So okay. maybe we got a whole bunch of right people now, that are ready. that way. I'm going to tell you. Ready? How do they fix that? Alter your identity. Alter your identity. Recreate yourself right freaking out. Watch this. So number one, all the experiences you've ever been through in your life, Brad, all the things that people said, the elephant, right? They, they tied its leg. They staked it in the ground when it was a baby. As it got big, it could easily rip the stake out of the ground and run away, but it's got a damn leash on it. Look, performance, performance equals knowledge minus leashes. You know what that means? You want performance. You want it, Brad. I'll give you all the knowledge, but if you got leashes in your head and you don't believe that that can happen for you, minus the knowledge, the knowledge is gone now because you got a leash, man. You got to unlock. If you're watching this, you have to unlock. What does that mean? Don't text, stay in your job where you're at right now, but alter your identity. Okay. What does that mean? Recreate yourself. Okay. Who do you want to be? Brad, I would tell everybody right now, tell the biggest lie they've ever told in their life. I'm going to give them permission to give the biggest lie ever. Look in the mirror. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to act like? How do you want to behave? Do you want your wife to admire you? Do you want your children to look up to you? Do you want to look in the mirror and like who you hell, who the hell you are? Do you want to go to the ATM account and pull out that damn receipt and look at it and say, hell yeah, baby. You want to do that? Then guess what? Take the feeling and believe that that's already happened right now and lie to yourself. Lie. And then guess what? Start working your ass off. Get around great people like us. And you know what will happen? You'll look up and reality will catch up and it won't be a lie anymore. That'll be who the hell you are. So if you're watching this and that's how you want to, you want to get out, that's how I got out. Go ahead and tell yourself the lie. Okay, Let's now what go. about, what would you say to someone who's maybe they're already in the insurance space? Mm-hmm. They're listening to this and they're thinking, yeah, I keep, I've heard all this bullshit before. Yeah, like I've, I'm I've, I've heard all this bullshit before and it's never it never happens. What would you say to them? People don't burn out. They lose their purpose. You forgot why you started, man. Look, I see a lot of dads and moms take their kids home from the hospital day one. OK, I'm going to read you a story every night. I'm going to I'm going to say prayers with you every night. I'm going to tuck you in. I'm going to give you a shower. And two years later, they're not doing that stuff with their kids. They're saying good night while they're watching TV. I see you guys you marry your wife. She gave you her life or your husband. You gave him everything. But then you know what? Two years later, your partner's sleeping in the same bed. You're miles apart. You know why? You can't keep it new, man. Brad, you know what's unique about me and you? Me and you. Me and you wake up every single day grateful. The second we wake up out of bed, I can't even believe we were forced to go to sleep, but we have to sleep a little bit to survive. Life's too damn good. Okay, some people are acting like they're going to live twice right now. So if you're an insurance agent and you're watching this and you're like, I don't believe this. Dude, stay where you're at, man. Okay, stay in hell. 
Okay. Or you can come over. But what if it's not hell? What if they're quite happy? Okay. Settle. Settle. What you've done is settled. And I want you to understand something. But what what do we offer more than, than, than the rest? Well, number one, what, what we offer more is, is this, is that if you can do a good job, which means you're better than average, okay, and you can sell policies, we will give you people who want to sell policies and let you teach them. That will give you overrides well, on those let people. You, I, would, I wouldn't say let you teach them because we're already well, teaching well, them. Well, I mean, I'm saying this. We'll, we'll let you, we would like you to be, them. Yeah, we'd like you to be a mentor to them, to help shepherd guide them. and answer questions while shepherd we're Shepherd and override. Yes, and then guess what? Take as many as you can and help be a leader. Dude, Brad, leaders make leaders. But that's, but that's, by the way, how you go from making half a million to a couple million is being a leader. You know, showing other people, helping other people. That's, again, I mean, you know, when I started making millions of dollars, when I look back, it was when I started helping a lot of people. Mm-hmm. When I was just trying to help myself, it never worked. I mean, I got decent, but I could never get past this, this glass ceiling. And the reason why is because I wasn't helping people. I was helping myself. Yep. And then as soon as I started helping other people, that's when, you know, the money started rolling in. Same thing with this in the insurance space, folks, you can make a good living by yourself. Keep to yourself. Don't have to bother nobody. You know, just do your thing. You're quite happy. Everybody's happy. No, nothing, you know, there's no issues. But if you want to go, you know, seven, eight figures, you're going to have to grow an agency. You're going to have to, you know, help a lot of people. The question is, is how do we get those people? It's hard to go out and recruit, you know, people think it's an MLM or something. And by the way, folks, this is not an MLM. It's the financial services industry. So a lot of people, cause I've, I've been told in the past, you know, about insurance, but it sounded very MLM to me cause I wasn't aware. And I'm like, is, that's an MLM. You know, I don't want to be in an MLM. Well, dude, you know how many people out there that kick ass in MLMs? Quite a few. Yep. But the majority don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, it might be the same for the insurance space. The majority aren't. Well, get around the ones that are. That's it. And that's us. And let me tell you something, by the way. If you're an MLM and you haven't made money in six months or a year, you know, they tell you to keep going, keep going. Guys, they just want you to keep paying your auto ship. Okay? If you haven't made money in six months or a year in, in MLM, dude, come give financial services a try. It works very similar, meaning you do get overrides on your team. But at the end of the day, guys, trust me when I tell you, if you're going to make money in the MLM space, you're going to make it within the first six months to a year. Now I ain't talking about big money. It takes time making big money, but you're going to make money. Dude, we've got people that literally started and 30 days later are doing 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a month and they and they and their kids basically and they have no idea. Dude, I've had people literally cry to me based on dude, I can't believe this. And I'm like, "Well, hey, you 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 did all the work, but they're literally crying over it." Yeah, Brad, I'm going to add to that. Um, I'm going to go back to this. You, you talked about an insurance uh, rep that's, you know, maybe fulfilled or not doing great. And you talk about all these people. They're just comfortable, man. They're in. just comfortable. Yeah. They're not going to jump at this. They're comfortable. Com- they comfort. don't want it. They don't want the pain, Andy. Comfort kills. And by the way, listen to me. Um, you know what's funner than fun? Winning. I think Andy Frazella said that. Okay. And I want to say this to you, Brad, this is heaven on earth. You love what you do. You're surrounded by great people. Brad, if you're a married insurance agent right now, or you're single and you're watching this and you're 18 years old, I will assure you when you're around people like me and Brad, you will create infectious energy. You will learn to be a leader. You will not only make money. This is not about money. The person you will become along the journey with Real Financial is priceless. We're making better humans. That's it. Brad, there's a guy in the lobby right now that just, he paid 50 or 75 grand to spend the day with you to shadow you. Listen to me. Okay. All you got to do is freaking join us and you're ready to roll. And and the reason why I say that is because every day I I hear people, Brad, I'll pay you 500 grand. Let me hang out for the week. You know what Brad says? Don't have time. Okay. Brad, people DM me. 500 grand. I got time folks. So if you got 500 (laughs) grand, I got, I got time for that. Well, my point is, is that Brad gets DMs every day and you know what he wants? He wants you to go to war with him. When I say go to war, he wants you to go and do what Brad likes to do, which is win. Brad's looking for people right now. We don't care about who you are, your name. We want to build a name for you. We want an army. That's why the shirt says army. We want an army. And by the way, we don't play to play. We play to win. We want you to win for your children. We want you to win for your wife. We want you to like who you are brad one of the th- my favorite things about you is your confidence man okay you studied 
the game for 20, 30 years. And guess what? Whoever joins you, they can have the same, the same education, the same skill and the same stuff as you in literally a year or two. It's insane. And then what, and then what, how does that transform their life? Well, number one, they can go do whatever they want for the rest of their life and they'll be winners and they can earn as much as they want. They'll love who they are. Opportunities will come left and right. Brad, do you know this? Since the people that have been with us for six months or a year that have done business with you, they've had people walk up and shake their hands because they perform so well with you. Now they're trying to get recruited out into other spaces. And they say, man, I love Brad Lee. I'm, un I'm unrecruitable. But the deal is, is they're building a name for yourself. Brad, I'm going to tell you something. All that you want is to help grow people and make them badasses. That's all you want. I know what you want. If anybody knows Brad, it says real for a reason because he's the realest dude around. Okay. You work hard and you're committed you join us, you'll take over the world. It's that, it's that easy. And by the way, take all the advice of what we said about real financial. If you don't join us, just do that shit in your own industry and you'll be the top 1% guarantee and you'll smash everybody's ass. That's for sure. I'm all about culture, Brad. Now, what if you're listening to this and you have already had other people from other uh, companies trying to get you in and we've just convinced them to do it, but, but they're going to go do it with whoever they talk to first or whoever they know in the industry. Like, do you want to, do you want to go hang out with your buddies at the company or someone you talked to private or previously, or would you say, screw whoever you're going with real financial is the only, or I should say the best option yeah. to go with. Well, well, the deal is, is that you're not watching your buddy's podcast. You're watching Brad's podcast. Okay, now I want to ask why you're watching Brad, Brad's podcast because you know the only way through wealth is through self-education. And Brad, I'm telling you, this is a school. You talk about like school, like they don't need to spend any money. All we need is their mind. God gave everybody a mind, Brad. If we'll put, I'm glad we're up to date with technology. I'm glad we're up to date with data. I'm glad we're up to date with powerful CRMs and all that and automation. Put your phone down and listen to the things that Bradley says. He says, if you'll use your mind and you'll join him and you'll work hard as a man or a woman, he'll make you successful. Garen freaking. Well, I'll show you how, because believe it or not, dude, they make themselves successful by doing what we just said. They would literally make themselves successful. But I see what you're saying. It yeah. ain't going to be me though, folks. It's end, it's going to end up you that does it. Well, Brad, Brad is humbly saying it's not going to be him, but what he's done is he's created a badass platform system, live training events and everything that ensures that you're successful, which means we hold you accountable. And unless, unless you're not willing to work, then you would not be right. So, but, but Brad, I don't think right? your people are lazy. Look, some yeah, but people, they're, they're, dude, I get listened to by a lot of people and some of them, I guarantee are lazy. They don't, some of them are weak. Yeah, some of them are they, scared. They don't want to be anymore. That's no, the deal. No. They've been waiting for an opportunity. So my, so my deal to everybody is this. And Brad, you've said this before. You can't save everybody, but you freaking die trying. Okay. I say, no, I say, I can't save you unless you swim towards me. That's right. But if they swim, your ass is going towards yeah, me. If you swim towards me, bro, I got you. That's it. And that's what I want to say is that, look, man, as we talk about like so much stuff in life that has to do with like life and how to sell, how to close, how to negotiate, how to overcome objections, how to build sales teams, all the other industries out there. We ain't trying to get anybody to leave anything. What we're trying to get everybody to do is understand one thing is what you're doing now, getting you the life that you want. Yes or no. And I want you to get out of the rat race. Cause I'm telling you right now, the way the world's going, they're separating. There's the middle class is going away. You're either getting rich or you're getting poor. Yeah. There's not going to be in the between. So you better get rich because I already know what it's like being poor. I grew up poor. I don't really, uh, you know, have any issues being poor. Like if I ended up poor, you know, I'll still be happy. Yeah. I'll still figure it out. I'll still have, you know, fun and whatnot. That way. But dude, I, I, it's a lot more fun, rich. And, and, and because that gap is separating, people always say, well, what's your advice? to the people, you know, on this side. And I'm like, jump. Like, dude, there's nothing there. Jump. Well, I don't want to quit my job. What if I can't find another one? You, you are the job. I'm going to show you how to build your own business. Live as a, as a, as an entity instead of as a human in an individual, mm -hmm. save taxes, make money, rub elbows with freaking other like-minded people, you know, figure out real estate deals and investments and all kinds of shit. It's not just selling insurance it's it's literally I, like the easiest way for me to say it is is you're getting out of the rat race like what what 
what if you find someone that doesn't want to work out? You just blow them out. Well, the deal is, is that number one, it's not all about working out, but it is about going very far in life and figuring out how to get through barriers and boundaries where a lot of people can't get through. And what I've learned is that working out when it gets hard, you have a choice. You can keep going or you can quit. So we call it beating the quitting mind. Why we all work out together is because we're challenging each other not to quit. It's not about having an eight pack. It's not about being in great shape. It's not about any of that. All that stuff is great. Yeah. Look, I mean, people like to buy from people that are better looking. Look, I'm just going to tell you this. If there's a big, heavy guy over here and there's a better looking guy over here. I mean, this guy's better looking is going to get more yeses. It's just the way it is. The world judges people. Hey, I didn't say I would buy from the good looking guy. I said, the world judges people. Am I right? Yeah. Sometimes when you tell the truth, people are like, oh, I don't like this guy. He said that because I'm overweight. Listen, it's the truth, okay? Understand the psychology of people. 95% of sales are people knowledge. Don't care what product knowledge. Don't care what product you have. Don't care. Don't care. If you knew how to connect with people, if you knew how people thought, if you knew what was going on in here, guess what? You could finish their sentences for them and you'd tell everybody, okay? And they want to be sold. They're dying to find somebody who actually understands them. You know, so the idea of it is, is that yes, we work out hard, but it's called beating the quitting mind. We want these guys to believe they can have anything that they want, right? But they're going to have to work hard for it and they're going to suffer. Okay. It, look, if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. If you do what's easy, your life will be hard mm. every single time. Okay. And all the hard stuff that you went through in life got you to what you have right now. You could have taken the easy path. And I just want to tell you that all these people that are leaders that are watching this right now, that are leaders. They're men and women, they're people, they're teams. One man, whether you got solo, one person working with you or a thousand, they're your responsibility. You got to create the culture to make those people want to grow. So guess what? Um, that's what we do. We create that culture. And yes, we're always on fire. Dude, what I don't see is you have a podcast. Why don't you start a podcast? Well, so we started one, but what happened is we went to like number five and then we're so consumed with building our light speed platform that has almost a thousand videos now that's insane intense closing negotiations objection handling phone skills we're building it it's like damn i ain't got time for the podcast yeah it does take a minute doesn't it yeah yeah you know but i like your podcast so you know i like this is great well you you, you should start one because again i mean like all those salespeople out in the world that love you they could wake up plug into that every single morning just you know walking doing their doing their five miles whatever it is they are doing to break the quitting mind. So we'll tell you what we do. It's like do. a prescription. Yes. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Andy Elliott, two L's, two T's, you type in Andy Elliott, you'll see Andy Elliott sales objection, Andy Elliott record, Andy Elliott sales training. And you'll see, watch all these different things that we run, but we drop, we have over 500 videos on YouTube. So just like you drop your podcast um, and it rolls over to YouTube, I actually just shoot specific YouTube content videos all the time for people who are getting into sales or in sales right now who won't spend any money. You know what I mean? Like heaven forbid they invest, but they can find a better version of themselves. You watch one of my videos, you're hooked. You'll be drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> You'll be drinking it. You know why? Every single one of my videos will help you go to another level in your skill. And uh, that's what we do. So we do need to do a podcast, but we, we shoot YouTube videos almost every single day to drop them out to, uh, to our crew. So... We're, so at 18 years old, you're broke. You don't even have lunch money. Mm -hmm. Your dad's a asshole, sounds like. Well, he was a chemist. He just He's an amazing, loving guy. He just, by the way, he th was taught to think small. He taught me to think small. and But he wasn't an asshole. No, no, he's a very loving guy. Okay. But he's just like, stay out of jail. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he, so he Had just, no curfew my whole yeah, life. Yeah, so he, he just wasn't a big thinker. Yeah, no. Oh, I thought I thought maybe like you, you, you. At first, I thought, damn, you're getting abused and shit. No, man, no, no. And that's why I want to say that mom leaves when I'm two. There's five kids that's in the house. That's crazy though that mom leaves. Like it, it's it, always the dad. I usually. told my wife that. I said, I said, baby, I, I don't understand how a woman can leave their kids. I don't get it. But, but, but the deal is, is that you know, it's it's a distraction. Would well, you know her now? Um, I got back together with her. Thirty second conversation when I was about 27 years old. Moved her down here, took her out of a trailer, right? Took her out of a trailer, moved her down where I lived at that time, bought her a house, bought her a car, d did all these things for her. I thought that she would appreciate it, thought we needed her back in our life. And uh, guess what happened? She started wanting more money, wanting more money, wanting more money. She's an alcoholic, wouldn't go to her AA deal. So guess what? I told her, I said, if you don't do this, we're going to have to send you back home. And uh, she said, man, thanks for taking me out of the trailer and ruining my life. Holy shit. Dang, Moved dude, her back home, gave her six months living expenses. I said, how much does it cost you a month to live? She's like, three grand. 
I don't know. I just, boom, here's 18 grand. Th thank you. Have a nice life. Haven't spoke to her since. We don't speak. And see, that's, again, mindset right there. Because most people say, you can't do that to your mom. I yeah. can. You can. Yeah, you have to audit your circle. Anybody in your life, and you always say follow your mentors. Anybody in your life that doesn't believe what you believe, that doesn't want good things for you, then that means they're against you. Period. Doesn't matter if they're related, right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, your best blood isn't your blood. The best blood is what? Not your blood. It's somebody that you know that's not your brother who is actually your brother. The guy that will stand behind you. And if somebody's coming to kill you right now, he won't leave the room, but your real brother will flee. You know what I mean? And by the way, that's just part of life. So we've created our new family as we've gotten older and as we've grown. And it's nice. It's called your inner circle. It's a beautiful thing. It's your new family. Now, what if someone wants to work for you? Cause they're fired up. They're like, dude, I want to work for this dude. Are you hiring? So that's a great question. We get hundreds of people wanting to work for us every day. And what I tell everybody is this, Hey, look, if you believe what I believe, then guess what? Come to a master closer seminar, buy all my training courses, go do all the training with me and everything that it is that I do. Cause obviously you're so obsessed with working for me, right? Right. You want this life? Do you really? Right. <laughs> Go through, do the training, spend your own dough, go through the process, let me meet you, let's see who you are and how you scale, and if you're willing to do that, then let's talk about it. But if you're like, no, I just want the job, no thanks. <laughs> it's a good way to, you know, filter out the turds. Well, yeah, because at the end of the day, what do you think they would do when they work for me? Well, they got to know the material anyway. They exactly. Have, they have to know the shit. They want to go what? Get on the stage, grab the mic. They want to grab, hey, I'm, hey I'm, I made it. No, dude, that ain't what this is about. You make it when you change someone's life. The contents, the beehive, that's what they're coming to. They're coming to get their life changed. Not me. It's the content. Now, I'm the one who's passionate about the content. I was a real success story with that content, which is why it all makes sense. So if you don't want to go through the content, how could you possibly work for me? I don't want frauds working for me. You know what I mean? That's the one thing in our company. I don't care how big we grow. Look, we grow a, a billion dollar company. Cool. We're never going to be frauds. I'm just telling you. People always know the same guy that I'm speaking with you right now. You said some people would rather have a dollar than a friend. Some people would rather have a friend than a dollar, right? Okay. We love making money. Who doesn't in sales? If you like sales, you like income. But we want the result. Damn, I want to win. And the way that I win is by watching the whole world shift the way they sell, and they all win. Well, where'd you get that desire to win? Watching people in car dealerships be dead. That's where it came from. Walking into a dealership right now, literally, look, when I made 716 grand my last year in 2014, I looked to the left and I looked to the right. The guy that was the closest to me made 110, okay? 110 and he thought he just killed a bear. And dude, I just made seven times more than that. It's you, the same dealership. Same dealership. Everybody else made 60. You know what? Everything that I did, they said it couldn't be done, but I did it. You know why? Because they don't study, they don't train, they don't master the craft. Recreate. My gosh, reinvent yourself, man. Look, who you are now is not who you're supposed to end up to be. I'm just going to, who you are now, Brad, watch this a year from now. You're going to speak different. You're going to talk different. You're going to look different. It's just the truth. If you're the same guy, I'm going to go find someone else because I'm getting better every day. So I need my mentors to get better. These people, they had no mentors. They didn't want one. They needed one though. So our goal is, is that I want to make enough noise and shake people to death so they can realize that, look, your wife deserves more. Your family deserves more. Your kids, listen to me. If you won't do it for you, do it for your kids. Your kids are going to have, so they're, they're back against the wall. They're going to have some tough stuff happen, but they're going to say, mom and dad push through this. They're our blood. We can do it too. But guess what? You freaking quit. So will they. You see, this is why, you, this is why people get excited. Come on, you, baby. You fire people up. <laughs> That's it. And Make, it's the truth, though. Well, it is the truth. That's the bottom line. That's what's crazy. Yeah. You know, mentally, <clears throat> people stop themselves. Mentally, usually. I mean, yeah. obviously, some people can have physical, you know, uh, challenges. But most of society's problem is all mental. Yeah. It's, you know, Brad, they, what do you call it? Low self-limiting beliefs, the glass ceiling, right? Like, we've heard it called a million different things. Um, Self-doubt. I mean, look, dude, if you don't believe in you, no one else is going to believe in you. Okay, the first big, biggest skill that we teach, first 30 minutes of a master closer seminar right out the gate is I get people to believe in themselves, to have an unbelievable belief 
that literally is unwavering, or unwavering, unswerving, um, unre- what does Cardone say? Unreasonable, be unreasonable about your success or the, your goals that you want, right? Be unreasonable, like you can't talk me out of it. It's not an option. That's the deal. You can't be talked out of it, man. And the idea of it is, is that everything that we're talking about is the truth. The difference between my training, why it works, number one, I have 21st century training. It's not the same regurgitated crap that's been on the, on the market for the last 20 years, okay? It's not the same stuff. It's switched up. Things have changed. Times have changed. Dude, in 2019, you didn't think in 2020 you're going to have to stand six feet apart and wear a mask, okay? Things have shifted. It's more digital. Our phone training is sick. And by the way, if you look like your competition, if you sound like your competition, people are going to treat you like the competition. 95% of people have bought a car or something from someone else before. When they do business with you, do you sound like that same person they bought from? You better not. If you don't and you have skill and you're training, they'll want to buy everything they buy off you for the rest of their life. And then they're having fun. And what do people do? They don't worry about spending when they're having fun. They'll spend whatever because we're not so serious. You're not a dud. When, when, when your team comes in in the morning, is it, are they, have they already worked out or, or do you guys do the morning calisthenics like they do in China? <laughs> so no, everybody gets in at 8 a.m. 80% of them do work out before they start the day because if you do work out, it studies show, I'm not going to go into the stats because we know most of them are made up, but they say they put you in a better mood for the next 12 hours. Yeah. So if they work out in the morning, they're in a better mood all day long while they're doing what? Talking to people. Now, what is our sales team doing? Number one, they have a great product. It's phenomenal. But they're talking people, they're talking to people into saying yes to want to buy something. If somebody's going to say yes, do you think they're going to want to say yes if they're in a good mood or a bad mood? When's the last time you said yes to something in a bad mood? Never. It doesn't happen. So when our guys are in a good mood and they're fired up, guess what happens? People get fired up too and they want to say yes because they're in a good mood. That's the missing piece, I think, that a lot of people right now, if you're a leader, look out on your sales team or if you're a salesperson, look at your attitude, look at your, your energy, look at the way you carry yourself. Are you motivating and inspiring your customers? Andy, I didn't know my job was to motivate and inspire your customers. It damn sure is, especially if you want to compete up, okay, and not stay average. I tried average. I hated it. It made me sick. Yeah, I threw up everywhere. It's a horrible life, okay? Guess what? have that fire, have that energy. And by the way, look, sometimes I'll know when to bring it to here and when to bring it to here. Obviously depends on who I'm speaking with. What's their age? How do they act? Where do I need to take them to? But that's all people knowledge, but we'll get them excited. That way they're jacked up and then they want to say yes. And then they say yes and we're done. What do you think of Patrick Bet David? Sorry. Literally just went to his event in Miami. Look, that's a smart dude extremely smart. We learned, we went to Patrick Bet David and learned from processes, you know, and, uh, and systems really a big part of growing our business to the next level. I can grow a sales team. We can close. That's not a problem. How do we run processes and systems? How do we run more efficiently? Where are leaks during the day that are costing us time that are costing us money? How do we figure out how to scale? Because look, it's kind of like this. You can take your company from here to here and then here to here, and you can keep doubling it. But at one point, getting 1% better every day is like a win. You know, Michael Jordan went and trained to Tim Grover, right? Kobe Bryant went and trained to Tim Grover because they wanted to get 1% better. They had NBA basketball players who, who coaches who were the best. But Tim Grover had a tech academy and he just said, Hey, man, does winning recognize you? Like, seriously, like you really want to win the way you want to win? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. And he would grind him to death, to death. And then when he was done, he'd say, all right, get an ice tub. They're like, I don't want to get an ice tub. He's like, you don't want to win. Get out of here. Okay. There's a level that all of us can go through and really all of us that can get to. And anybody watching this right now, whatever they want, they can have it and more and keep raising your standards. What you want three years from now, dude, you're going to get it in a year and a half. If you train hard, if you work hard, if you keep this persistency and you keep this energy and you take care of yourself and stay healthy, guess what? Then in a year and a half from now, it's not like you got on a mountain. You're like, success is in a box. I won. Yay. No, it's like, okay, what's next? Grover's book, Relentless. He says, what's next? Jordan, he, he, he won. He, guess what he said? All right, another one, another one, another one. He didn't raise it and say, oh, I made it. He's like, time for the next one, baby. That's the way I want to live till I die. It's exciting, man. I see a lot of people that are just dead and people that are watching this and they're saying, hey, you know, that's just too much energy. You can have the same energy. And by the way, your wife deserves it. Your husband deserves it. Your kids deserve it. Your grandkids deserve it. 
Quit being so selfish, okay? Change yourself for them. If you won't do it for you, do it for them. What if you're just happy being a schlub? I'm not okay with that. <laughs> what if someone's just happy being a schlub? Mm. I'm just not okay with that. But you know what? I get that. That's okay. I mean, then I guess that, that's your life. But the idea of it is, is that if there's anybody else that's looking up to you, you're teaching them to be one. Yeah, well, that, that may be true. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to say. If you've got kids, okay, at the end of their life, when they didn't get what they wanted, you had a lot to do with that. And I'm just not okay with that. So, so in like the last five years, who on your team do you think has, I mean, has anyone ever said, man, this is too much, dude. I just want to be like, this is just too much. No. And the reason why is because it's addictive. Success is addictive. Okay. Listen, Jim. Okay. Progress. I was going to say Jim Rome. Jim Rome talks a lot, a lot about progress. And I used to study Jim a lot, right? Cause he was always a really good speaker, but obviously I'm very energetic, like a Tony Robbins style guy, but Jim Rohn was a really good speaker, good with his words. I wanted to be better at speaking. So I watched other people and saw how they spoke, how they told stories. I love storytelling. You're the best storyteller in the damn world. Well, the idea of it is, is that I think that a lot of the times, you know, there's that next level that you can go to in speaking and you got to find somebody who's really good at it. Now, where are you going from here? What is your next level? Um, well, so I was going to say our next level, I believe is number one, we're going to own the automotive sector and, and, and uh, sector. And why I say own it, listen, this isn't come from arrogance or cockiness. Okay. Cause a lot of people are like, Hey, call it out, name your shot. I'm going to own it. So if somebody's watching this, they're like, Oh, you're going to own that. Okay. No, we're going to make sure he doesn't own it. No results are all that matters. Our results are insane on our dealer platform with you, which is insane. This is crazy because you get cancellations all the time. Okay. People love your program. Your program's the best, but you're not the trainer on it. Not in all of them in your own, you are, but not in all of theirs. Their job is to maintain their clientele on your phenomenal system. Our, our content is so good. We've never had a cancellation. They won't cancel. You know why? Because what you pay to what they're making is freaking insane. And you fire people up and give them good word tracks, you know, and teach them how to overcome objections and rebuttals. I think what you add that most that I don't see in most is belief in themselves. Yeah. You add an element of confidence where people learn confidence and, and almost self-worth. And with that foundation, the rest of it is like nitrous. Yes. And so when you teach that, also you teach the other side, which is competence creates confidence. Watch this. Hey, Brad, if I hit you with an objection, which we're not, but I'm just going to say I did. Let's say I said, hey, look, I'm going to go look at a couple more cars. I'm going to get back with you. Guy goes on a test drive, right? Guy's looking at an RV. Guy's looking at a motorcycle. Don't care. Guy's doing any, doesn't matter what it is. He says, thank you for showing me this option, but I got a couple more I'm going to go look at. Okay. When he says that, if you don't know what to say, something's going to come out of your mouth that you don't want to say. It's just the truth because you're not prepared. Success favors the prepared. So we teach this, word tracks. When someone says this, you say this. We're going to tell you exactly what to say. We're going to tell you how to say it. We're going to tell you the tonality you got to have, why you say it, the energy. Guys, listen, when you get hit with an objection, don't go down. Increase your state. Increase your state. Like, hey, I'm so glad you asked that. Hey, you know what? I love that. However, and then you divert it and you overcome it and you move on with the cell. But I'm going to say this to you. I believe that whenever people get hit with objections, they get a deflated state and that decreases their confidence. Okay. Which you said, we're really good about building people up that they can, you know, these people can buy, they came to buy and they're going to buy as long as they do their job. But the deal is, is that you have to have the skill. So we teach hundreds of objections on your training platform, hundreds of objections. I need to talk to my wife. I'm going to get back with you. I need to think about, it. we're not buying anything today. We just, we just started. doesn't matter what it is. We teach them what to say and what, what our sales pros are doing, which is why it's industry changing is because they're going through, they're taking this 21st century training. They're studying the word track. Anything that's new to you, you can't be confident at. I don't care if I got a hula hoop in here for you right now. And I said, hula hoop, you, you would be awful at it. But if you practiced it every day for 30 days, we'd have this podcast again and you would nail it. You'd be like, boom, you'd be, you know, wrapping it up. Here's my point. When something's new to you, you can't be confident at it. It's physically impossible. So what happens is we have professional wingers in the sales industry. Stop winging it, go in, study it, learn the word track, memorize it, tattoo it on your heart. The next time someone hits you with it, bam, abracadabra, you close it. The confidence is massive. 
because you know it. That's what we teach. That's true. And yeah, what's cool is I uh, convinced him and his wife, Jackie, who's sitting on the couch. You may not see her, but anyway, convinced them to come and help me train some of my real financial folks. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I started a company called Real Financial so we could show people literally how to get out of the rat race, you know. And what what do I mean by that? I mean make three to five hundred thousand dollars a year. Because dude, if you don't have any money left over, it's hard to invest. And if you can't invest, you're not getting out of the rat race. So like you have to either live below your means, drastically below your means, which a lot of people just refuse to do, or you just need to make more. Mm-hmm. So so like me, I don't want to get rid of my cars and get rid of my houses. I want to freaking make more. So a lot of people got confused. I'm like, dude, I looked around. I saw all the industries out there. I ran into one insurance space, financial services. I found out it made more millionaires than any other industry on the planet. And I said, man, I got to build a company to where I can lead people right out of the rat race, build a ladder, include the training and everything. If I can get the best trainer, the best compensation, the best carriers and the best timing, I mean, when COVID hit, dude, oh, shh. and especially now, 2023 is the absolute best time on earth. But anyway, so now I convinced Andy and his wife, Jackie, and his whole freaking Elliot group to come in and be the training arm of Real Financial. Brad, anybody listening to this right now, everything that you just said, just in case anybody doesn't understand it, I'm going to lay it down real easy so you can pick this up, okay? As a salesperson, I wanted an opportunity. I was hungry. Didn't have an education, didn't have any experience. Got in, made a lot of money. Now, when I got in the automotive space, when I was younger, you had to have inventory, right, Brad? Do you need inventory with insurance? No. Is it recession proof? Yes. What is the barrier of entry? Everybody right now needs to ask himself one question. What do you want to make a year? Let's just be real. Let's quit bullshitting each other. What do you want to make? If what you want to make is 300 grand, 500 grand, a million a year, guess what? You need to be in the insurance space and you need to do it with Brad Lee and we will train you to become the best in the world. And I'm going to explain this to you. When I say barrier of entry, Brad, a guy wants to become a doctor. He's got to go to school for seven years. He gets 250 grand in student loan debt. Then he goes to residency for three years, makes 60 grand a year. 10 years later, 10 freaking years in paying back 250 grand, he gets the opportunity. What did I say? opportunity. Nothing's given to him. Opportunity to do what? Open a practice, work six days a week from eight in the morning until eight at night to make three to 500 grand a year. They can start this business right now. We have not true. They got to get their license. That's right. They can have a license. They can start right now. But if, if not, then they have to get a license, which takes probably 10 days. Brad, listen, everybody wants to graduate, but not everybody wants to grab a book and go to school. What Brad's saying is that if you have the courage to put forth a little bit of work and go to school. That's a requirement. Yes, and take your license. Here's the deal. Okay, can I ask everybody a question? I'm just going to get straight to it. Okay, I want to work with Bradley. Okay, I look up to him. I always say my mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. I just literally was sitting there. I was asking Brad. I saw a picture of him in his office when he was 21 years old with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. And I was looking at all these pictures and what does that tell me as Brad's about to be 54 years old, um, on January 27th. Okay. I, it tells me that dreams come with the price, Brad, and what took you 40 years, 30 years to learn. Okay. You didn't know about insurance when you were 21 years old. Okay, you were trying to figure it out. You were looking for a vehicle, but you didn't have a Brad Lee in your life. You were talking to everybody to get all the information. Now it's here. It's real financial. It's very, very simple. If you can get your insurance license, and I'm going to give a number. Listen, I'm going to give it early. I'm going to give a number. I'm going to give a number. If you'll text this number, I will send you information on what you need to do. Brad will pay for your pre-licensing. Brad, it's 300 bucks. He'll pay for it. And then you go get your test. People say, wait a minute, Brad's going to pay for it. People always ask me, what's the catch? What, 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 what's the catch? I'm like, dude, what do you mean? Well, what's the catch? I said, there is no catch. And then they get to the school and they're like, hey, it's 300 bucks. And I'm like, dude, use the code I gave you. It's free. They're like, it's oh, free. dude, is it really free? My favorite four letter F word, free. It's free. And I'm going to give you a number. Everybody write this down. Whether you do it or you don't, write this down. 712-409-7325, which is actually 712-409-REAL, like the real Brad Lee. Listen, Brad, if they'll text that, I will send you over the information. I will send you over the pre-licensing link. And I promise you, listen, 10 days later, okay, you're mine. 
your mind, your Brad's. We are going to war. Brad's, what, what does my shirt say? Real financial army. Army, baby. Listen to me. If you're around five crackheads, you'll be your, you'll be the six. That's guaranteed. But if you're around five badass millionaires, it doesn't mean you'll be the sixth unless you're consciously paying attention, Brad. Here's what I'll tell you. I don't let people fail. You know how I am. I'm psycho. I'm obsessed. I'm an underdog. I see the best in people. If you're watching this right now in 2023, 2024, whatever the hell year it is that you're watching this and you're like, dude, I'm looking for my way out. Okay. I need somebody that's, that's going to rip my greatest best out of me. That's me. And all you have to do is get your damn license. And now number one, you're recession proof, Brad. And then, and then excuses can end. Dude, that's it. You're free. And by the way, listen to me. Can I ask you a question? And by, by the way, Brad, if they're not willing to work hard, they're not going to make it anywhere. And by the way, the sad thing about it is that the time's going to pass anyways. Okay? Choose your hard. Do you want it to be hard and fail and lose and be broke? Or do you want it to be hard and win and join some winners? If you're watching this right now, and I'll make this very clear. If you want to work with Bradley, if you want to partner with Bradley, if you want to join an army of savages savages who take care of their families. Brad, my team, dude, I'm telling you, they cheat on their wives, their girlfriends, they're fired, they're gone. You don't go to the gym, you don't take care of yourself, you're gone. Brad, I want the best for everybody. Well, you don't have to be one dimensional. So if you want a great life and you're watching this and you want to totally recreate, well, how about we make you a lot of money and how about you have your best life too and surround yourself with somebody who won't let you settle. And raise your standards. Me. Yeah, raise your damn standards. Three magic words. But you got to get around somebody that, Brad, watch this. If I saw that you had food on your face and I said, hey, Brad, you got food on your face. And you're like, what, dude? I ate three hours ago, man. I've been hanging out with people for three hours. Those three people didn't tell you you had food on your face because they don't care. People who care about you will tell you the truth. Or they're weak. They're yeah. embarrassed for and, you. So they wouldn't want to tell you because then the, you, yeah. they would know you know. But bottom just like line. A, just like a booger in the nose. <laughs> you ever see people with boogers in their nose and, 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 and like nobody tells them? I always tell them. I always tell them too. And if we're in front of a bunch of people, I try to, I try to be nonchalant and be like, (laughs) you know, but if they, if they still don't get it, I say, finally, eventually I'm like, you know, I try to do code. Like I'll be boog left Nas (laughs) left Nas. But you know, you you see some of these people sometimes where like they're breathing in and out and you can see it go. Yeah, dude. I I, I, I gotta go, bro, bro. Because why? Because, dude, I don't want you to keep going. You might see 10 more people with that shit in your nose. But we're not talking about boogers in the nose. I'm talking about this. Why do people make excuses in your mind? Because there's people, listen, there's people out there right now, as you know, they're making 60, 70, 80 grand a year. There's people busting their ass in the car business. There's realtors that cannot sell a house to save their damn life, but they're decent salespeople. It's just the market right now. There's people selling mortgages. There's people selling furniture. There's all kinds of sales professionals in the world that are not millionaires. Can we just be honest? They're not millionaires. Nor are there a lot of millionaires in their business. Like In other words, there ain't a lot of millionaire car salesmen. That's right. There are some. It is possible, but most of them are making what 80, 90, 120, especially now. Cause dude, yeah. the, the heyday's over for the car business but, for but a while. Brad, let's say they are making that money. Can we all say a word reoccurring? Yeah, reoccurring. I agree that we could talk them into still doing it, but dude, I want to just find the people that are out there making less than a hundred, 200. And they're like, dude, I've been doing this forever and I need to wake up. Right. Yes. Get to the next level, find a group that I can level up with. And yes. move on. And then there's all these people that are listening also that are not even making a hundred. Those are the people I want to, I want to wake up like, dude, how do you get more money? Number one, you got to sell something, right? Yep. Well, again, insurance, get your license, financial services, IULs, annuities, 401k, stuff like that. Dude, everybody, th- th- there's an unlimited marketplace for Brad, that. Can I stop right there though? And just say, if somebody hears you say insurance, IULs, annuities, and they don't have money, they don't know what that means. Let me explain this. We'll teach you, please. In one day, I've got college dropouts dropping out of school six months later, making 50 grand a month. I'm not telling you that that's going to be you. If you're committed, if you'll work hard, I will make you the best. Brad, you've seen it done. You know what we do. I just wanted to say, if they don't understand, what does a confused mind do? Nothing. If somebody doesn't understand insurance, I'm going to ask real simplicity. Are you coachable? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, text the damn number. 
Yeah. Or if you just That's want it. to make money, just trust me. Cause I'm telling you, it, it's a no brainer. Anyone can do it. The question is, is are you willing to? Cause I've had people say, well, Brad, it can't be that easy or everyone would be doing it. And I'm saying it is that easy. Mm-hmm. You say it's hard. I don't necessarily think it's hard no. to freaking study a little bit, get a license and then freaking do the work. And, and, and by the way, if we didn't have you and or me at the fucking helm training people every day, then it might not be as quick or possible. That's right. But you got two of the best sales trainers on planet earth training people every single day of the week, live and virtually. Yes. Meaning we've got interactive courses. We've also got live meetings going on every single day. Brad, I, I want to say something real quick. People okay. are going to think this is a commercial to, no. to start, but no. it sounds like one, but I'm telling you, I almost want to make it one. Why? Because dude, in 2023, I want to make at least 1,000 millionaires. So in order to do that, dude, I need to recruit thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, who wants to be recruited to be a freaking millionaire? Come on, man. Because have you ever heard the the saying, out of 100 people, one is a warrior? Yep. You know? Race or targets? Yeah, something like that. That's the one. That's why you need way more to find the one. Yeah, so let's ask everybody, are you the warrior or are you the target? And by the way, when I say this, look, dude, if you're making $5 million a year, Brad's not trying to ask you to stop your business and come over and do this or making $100 million. Brad's talking about the people making less than 100 making 200 making 300 You had a good 2022, but 2023 seems to be adjusting. I see realtors already. They're going to take a, make a third of what they made last year. Okay, they don't have to. You don't have to settle. You don't have to stop fighting. And by the way, listen to me. You can literally dial one day a week and you can make additional income. You don't have to do this full time. I just want to be clear. We have a lot of, I'm going to say they're like, they're housewives or they're moms. They take their kids to school while their kids are at school. They dial for a couple hours, a couple times a week. Dude, they make an additional couple grand, couple grand a week. Some of them are making more money than their husbands that are working full time. All I'm saying is I don't care who you are. They text that number. This is what's going to happen. Number one, they're going to get mentored by me and you. Number two, if a guy called you right now and said, hey, man, I want to do some live coaching with you, Brad. I need an hour. Dude, it's at least 10, 15 grand. And if, even if you can put it on your schedule, dude, they see you weekly. They get the live training. You don't pay for it. It's free. If anybody's ever wanted to be in close proximity to you, they've ever wanted to, and they're willing to do the work, and they want to be a warrior for you, then come join the army. That's it, man. And I'm telling you, in three years, Brad, in three years, I can guarantee you have a damn different life. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All right, but now, right. but now, but now, let's move past the commercial section of the of the conversation. Let's bring some value. Why do you think people, even though they just heard us, and it's free, so it can't be a scam. It's free. We're going to show you how to make money. We'll give you the job. We'll pay for your license. It's free. There you cannot be a scam. If you still think it's a scam, you're a fucking idiot. Now, why do you think still after all that, there will be people that continue to do their normal ass shit? Can I answer that? Why wouldn't everyone listening that, that, that I'm talking to? Cause again, if I'm making $7 million and I'm enjoying my life, I'm not going to go sell insurance. Yeah. I, I don't need to, We're not talking to you, you know, and if, or if you're just fucking straight up happy with where you are, like, dude, you could be making $35,000 a year, happy as a pig in shit. And you know, you're not interested in change. Well, not talking to you, but most people they're trying to figure out how to get up here. And I've got a ladder sturdy as hell. All you got to do is climb it. Why aren't those people making a decision? It's very, very simple. Brad, I'm going to give you two things. Number one, you always say people never out earn their own self-worth. Number one, maybe they don't think they can have a life like that and they don't think they're worth it. However, in our situation right now, most of the people that are working with us are making five times more than they ever imagined in their life. And they had to trust us blindly. Okay. And we let them, which is what people want. They want to be led by people that have been where they want to go. Okay. Number two, I'm going to think about something real quick, right? Why don't people make it? Brad, what do you think? Because they, they give up and they don't have a very good work ethic. And, and by the way, working your ass off, but also loser dialogue. Brad, what if I say, well, what if I do it and it don't work? <laughs> well, do winners say, I can't afford to be in the same place next year and it not work. I can't afford for that to happen. The cost is too great for me not to do it. 
Dude, I know what 2022 looked like for me. I know what it looked like. I know if I'm 18, if I started working at 18 and I'm 40 years old now and I'm, and I've been working for 22 years or I'm 30 years old and working for 12 years and I've got 50 grand in the bank, dude, you've managed to save $3,000 a year since you're 18 years old. Are you ever going to retire? No. Brad, you are, you're going to be hurting. Right, Brad, can we talk about something and just skip? And I don't even know that this is something we're going to talk about. Can we fast forward this and say, if a guy did start with us and we taught him to make a ton of money along the way, they had reoccurring money comes in, which means once you make the money, the money continues to come. And then after two to three years, they're making a whole bunch of money. They decide that they want to get out and do something else. Can we talk about EBITDA (coughs) real quick? What, What that means, all the money coming in and what they can do with that? They can sell it for more money than they have coming in and they can get out and take a check. Am I right? Well, they can sell their business. Yeah. It is a business. If you text the, the 712-409-32 or uh, 7325, 712-409-7325, you are starting your own business <coughs> literally with zero entry cost. And all you have to do is get your license and it is game freaking on. And you have to work your ass off like you have to do in any business if you're going to make it. 712-409-REAL. Just remember that. It's easy. And by the way, if you're driving or you're walking on a treadmill and you're listening and you don't want to, you know, uh, stop, just text. That's, a, that's All you got to do is text. That's why we did a text so we could just see the Text bomb info. squad to this number. Yep. And you'll get all the information you need, all, everything you got or everything you need to start the process. Because the process is, number one, you got to get licensed. If you're already licensed, you can still do this because the process will filter those out. Go. Can you talk about if somebody's an insurance agent and they're watching this right now. Can you can you please tell them what you'll do for them if they come over with to our army? Well, the, I mean, what if you're in the insurance space, you would know that, you know, you can make really good money by yourself, but you can make a lot of money with other people and it takes a long time to build a team and 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 grow your agency and grow your network and it takes, you know, sometimes 10, 20 years. Well, because uh, we have um, the ability to pull a lot of people we're building people's teams for them. What does that mean? Well, that means like, dude, I get like, just from this podcast, I will get thousands of people calling in. Well, I need licensed agents to walk them through some things. I can't do it all myself. Andy can't do it all himself. So what we've done is we put together interactive virtual training and, and weekly training that Andy's running. And I'm telling you right now, that in and of itself is worth doing this, even if you don't stick with it. Yes. Like just come get educated and learn and motivated and then go out and kill it in some other industry. But if you're, if you're already in the insurance space, you already possess a license. All you do is get contracted with us and a few of the carriers we tell you to get contracted with plug into our system and we will, and if you're kicking ass again, you got to kick ass. Yep. Here's the disclaimer, folks. You're not going to come hang your license and then get a big team because we give you a big team. It doesn't work like that. You got to first come on board. You kick the ass So we know you can kick that ass and then we are going to give you people to grow because we have a lot of new people that have never kicked any ass. So we need a lot more ass kickers that are already licensed, that already know the industry. And I don't care whether it's IULs, annuities, we can do them all. Yeah, we don't care. Okay. So, so again, you want to be a high level financial advisor that takes people's, you know, money and turns it into more money and investment and great. You want to do mortgage protection, final expense, doesn't matter. We can do it all. And what's crazy is we've got systems and processes that literally are plug and play. We've got all the tools, all the training. You don't need anything except the desire to win. If you bring the work ethic and the desire, the rest is is, is, is handed to you. Yeah, Brad's but, a little jacked up today. He yeah, likes being around the yep, team. Look at that smile. Well, at the end of the day, he's man. either getting richer or he's getting more handsome. I think both. Well, Could be both. Getting richer does make you more handsome. It has it is to. true. Boom. Boom. Okay. That's a ball, baby. Right out the game. That's a ball. <laughs> hey, but the reason why I'm excited you guys are here is because listen, I got a lot of people that listen to this. They have companies, right? Yep. They don't. They don't uh, listen to it for shits and giggles. They're listening to it so they can pick up badass little techniques. And I don't see anybody out on the marketplace today, as far as a training organization goes, that fucking holds a candle to the group I got right here on stage. Well, Brad, one of the things I want to say to that is that, look, if anybody's out there right now when they're winning, they have a team. All right. Look, a team can't be beat. And I always said this, even in your last po- podcast, an individual can be beat. Okay. The person with the team is unstoppable. The question is how real is the team? 
How much heart does the team have? How much passion does the, the, does the team have? How much do they believe in the product that the company's even selling? If you look in the eyes of all, all my, and I'll call them killers, like the wolf on Wall Street, the guy that showed us that a sales team could do anything, the guy that set the example for guys like me and you, these guys right here, they want to win. They don't do it for money. Hey, is Belfort your mentor? Belfort, I think, is everybody's mentor. If you don't study and watch Belfort, you're crazy because the guy come from nothing. The guy believed in himself and he got others to believe and follow him. And mm. guess what he made people do? He made people feel special and important. Mm. And I truly mm. believe that. Look, man, a lot of people out there, what they're doing. Let me go to the opposite here. If you watch Belfort, he hired a bunch of people that weren't that great and he made them great. Right. Yep. Yep. He's a sales trainer. Brad, is that He's a, a great leader. Listen. Huh? He asks, is that the bomb? Hold yeah. on. Remember, only Brad gets to call the bomb. Yeah, I, I, okay. I determine what the bombs are, son. You got to watch the twins. But I want to say something to you, I'm Brad. Just, I'm just right now just trying to see if I agree with all this. Now, again, from a sales perspective, I do. Mm -hmm. But from a, like, didn't he, didn't he uh, like, narc on a bunch of people? So at the end of the day, who he was and who he became, I don't have any part of that. What I did is that I watched the movie, okay? I just watched the movie. I never hung out with the guy. I watched the movie, and I watched that, the young lady sitting in the audience that literally had her car repoed, and she had a baby, right? And she didn't have any money. He made her believe in herself, and she became somebody great, and she was one of the top achievers in the company. If you look at all my men right here, my women, Should obviously I? my wife, here's what I'll tell you, is that I think right now, Brad... How many times do you see people that go and that hire the best, but the best don't care about their company? Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to making great badasses, right? All these people were made, they were created just like I was, and so were you. I was just testing you. Okay. Because, like, if you want me to call him and let you chat with him for a minute. Call him. Please. Get his ass on the call. Face Let's go. Tell him we well, again, I mean, at the, at, at the end of the day, he, I'll be one of those dudes that call just to prove that I know somebody. Call him. And, and I hate when they do that to me. Call him. We love him. <laughs> hey, call him. Tell him we love him. I got tell buddies that call FaceTime. I know when it's FaceTime, they're wanting to fucking prove something. So I say, hey, what's up? And they're like, oh, and fucking some dude's sitting there going, dude, I listen to your dropping bombs. So that's what I'm about to do to Jordan right now. Let's go. Let's do it. And listen, that guy changed the lives of a lot of people just like you did. Even if he yeah, made he some did. mistakes. Hey, he's a badass, dude. And he, not, only, not only that, but what he is good at forget what he did again if he went to prison in my who opinion, cares he paid man? his fucking dues dude listen but, to me but what he did do dude is he got a lot of fucking people riled up and he made a lot of people a lot of money but there's some people out there gonna say well he cost a lot of people a lot of money too and you're glamorizing it you, well well i know sorry. you all you're glamorizing is the fact that he fucking made people fire breathing dragons and for some reason you got the same ability yeah, and I'm going to tell you this. Hey, that guy gave everything he had, and he made some bad choices. Let the person that had made a bad choice throw the first stone at Jordan. That's a bomb. Done, baby. That's a bomb. That's a fucking bomb. Oh, oh, Woo! Oh, Let's go, baby. Because, listen, I'm going to tell you this. Dropping bombs was you right here teaching people that were nothing that they could be something. That's it. I was a guy that sat on a team that one day wanted to have a team. And guess what? Guys like you, guys like Jordan, guys like that that went out there and showed us that could be built, inspired it all in all of us, which it was crazy. But crazy things can happen. But you got to believe truly in your heart that you're going to do this, and you got to hire people that truly believe. Look at these warriors. Every one of their eyes, Brad, look at them. All of these people, let me say one word. Hey, hey, Brad, and I want you to do one thing, and I want you to call Jordan Belfort, but I want you to know this. My, I don't know. I, I ain't going to call him. No, I don't know. We could call him. But listen, all, all I can say is, dude, there's a dude here that fucking loves your ass. Hey, we love his ass. Get him on. Let's give him a big kiss, man. Let's give him a big kiss. Let's FaceTime him. Let's FaceTime him. If he answers, cool. If he doesn't, we'll keep going. Let the show go on. But I want to say something, and why you're doing that is that, Brad, you've created a lot of legends out there just like all of us. We've watched your content for a long time, and you become a legend in our mind. And you may be, think, man, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not nobody. No, you had the balls to reach down, grab your sack, and take a risk. And it taught us to take risk. And that right there, that should be a bomb for Brad Lee. I'm dropping that bomb. I'm dropping that bomb. Let's go, baby. That was good. All so right. here's my question. So once upon a time, there was just Andy Elliott and your lovely wife, Jacqueline. Yeah, she's she's amazing. But that they, there was just you guys. There was there wasn't all these freaking bandits running around, you know, huh? Yeah. So so at some point you had to you had to say, okay, I'm gonna do this, and then start. Right. Everyone has that. 
where'd you start? Well, again, I'll go back to the who was the first one here at all? Yeah. Sean Pollard okay, right here. And then, and then there was another one that came and then another one. You got the came. twins, right? Yeah. So it doesn't just all of a sudden you go, Hey dude, I want to build a team. And there's a bunch of fucking passionate dudes hanging around, running up mountains with you. And, and, yeah. Well, that's, that's what, that's what I want to get to. had they wanted to do it their way and we broke them and they quit and then we had the twins well, so we broke now, see but see here's what most business owners don't do dude they don't have a process where when someone breaks off because they can't hang it's okay they act like if that person leaves our business is over no ways sometimes the best thing you can ever do is get rid of a top employee that shows everybody how great they are and don't contribute to the company and the team. Look, I'm going to explain this to you. My highest rev earners right here, right? They work like they're the lowest rev earners. We go back to zero every day, Brad. We stay at zero. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, million trillion dollar houses, money in the bank, don't care. I could have a $500,000 watch on my, my hand right here. You know what it says? Alpha warrior. You know why? This watch right here means more to me than anything else. It's my identity. It's who I am. And I think there's a lot of fake-ass people out there right now getting on Instagram trying to be cool like they made it. Hey, why don't you be real? Why don't you have real grit, real grind, real passion? When I hear you speak, you copied that shit from someone else, and you're trying to share it. There's no passion behind your words. You don't freaking believe. And that's why nobody believes in you, and your company will die. That's a bomb. That's a bomb. Another bomb. We'll that's a bomb, baby. baby. Listen, hey, but I want to do something, though, real quick, Brad. Just in the middle of the interview, I want to do something real quick because I got something for you. Where's it at? Right here. And this is important to me. And, you know, I didn't tell you, but we just wrote a book, right? Let me show it to you. When you see the cover, you're going to get a little bit tripped out. Oh, Ooh. it's called the book of deadly scripts. Let me explain this to you. Anybody in any sales organization, organization right now, either somebody's selling something, they're looking for something to sell, or they're training to get better. Our goal as leaders is to kill all non-income producing activities, all. If they come to work and they work for you and you're the leader, they're your responsibility. Their family trusts you to lead them. I get on the front line with my people every single day. And I'm going to tell you this. I'll make the calls. I'll do anything it takes. Why? Because I'm no better in them. And guess what? We're going to go into war every day. We're going to go to battle every day. And guess what? We'll take a bullet for one another. What about you guys? Now, let me ask you this. If your company isn't growing at the pace that you want it to grow at, it's not advertising budget. It's the people inside of the company. You know we don't even advertising, and we're growing at light speed paces. <laughs> oh, hey, let me that's share that's something with speed. you, though, Brad. This book, I won't tell you how many we've sold, but it's in the thousands, and we've done it in a matter of a week. It's crazy. Salespeople right now, I wrote the scripts. I showed them where to find the list, how to pick up the phone, that little piece of, piece of plastic everybody has, and literally make the phone calls. I teach them what to say, how to say it, and if it doesn't work, if the rebuttals come in, I teach them the objections, exactly how to handle it. It's they all in it. this book, and they can keep it in front of them to make the calls, but we haven't mailed out a single book yet. You know why? Why? Because I say this for you. To get the first book. Mm. I want to give it to you right here. Come here, Brad. Come on, guys. Right, guys. Let's give this to Brad. And by the way, Brad, guys, can we also tell Brad what else we got for him right here today? Guys, show Brad what we got for him. Let's go, guys. Let's show Brad some love. Again, again. Brad Lee. Brad Lee. Brad Lee. Woo! Guys. Damn, I love me some Brad Lee. All right, all right, let's get a mic back up. Let's get a mic back awesome. up. That was awesome. I've hey. always wanted to do that. We I love Brad, of, uh, Brad Lee. Lee butt cheek. That was good. Brad, welcome to the initiation of the family. You are family to us. Hey. Marty, if we need to get him adjusted, come on over. Oh, I'm, but good. We, I'm good. Brad, Should have told you to wear a helmet, Brad. Listen to me. He's not being tested at all, does he? You, you've made a big difference in our guy's life. 100%. So the first, the first edited proof copy that we got before we distributed any of them or mailed them out, I wanted to give you the very first one. That book is going to way that change the way training is. And I'm just going to say this. I, it ain't a pitch. But if somebody wants the book, I don't have it on my, on my website for sale. They just text. You know, they know the number, the 918-210-0254. They text that. We'll get them a copy. Say it one more time. 918. Put it on the screen. 918-210-0254. That book, it's made for automotive sales pros. But... 
If you sell anything, you change 5% of the words, it's over. That book will make you a million dollars. But you got to be willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. You got to feel like the book's going to make you a million dollars. Because nothing's going to work if you don't think it's going to work. But if you have that book, you're dangerous. Yep. So it's deadly. So I wanted to give you the first copy. We love you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We can continue now. It's your show. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll memorize them all. Thank you, buddy. I know you will. Trust me, you're going to love the book. It's dangerous. That's why we called it dead, Deadly Cell Scripts. Because they're deadly. We make you sign a waiver before you get the book. Yeah. Just from the danger involved? From all the danger and the money. We don't want you to get in trouble financially by spending too much money in the wrong places. So we got to have you sign a waiver. Well, you just need to make volume two and get rid of that. Done. Whatever you want to do, it's done. We're going to make as many volumes as we want. Just get rid of automotive. Well, the deal is, is that, so I have, Brad, so we've dominated the automotive space and we're continuing to do it. And I have a loyalty to automotive people. I'm going to explain this, that there are people, we love them. You're an automotive guy. Whether, whether you're an entrepreneur today, but you started as an automotive guy. 100%. Here's my goal. I will always be there for our automotive guys because I understand exactly what it takes to win and they can destroy everybody overnight. Now, as we shift into entrepreneurs, that book, 95% of that is wrote for entrepreneurs. But my very first well, book. Well, technically, car salesmen are entrepreneurs. Hell yeah, they are. Well said. All Good I job. Say is Business they're, professionals. They're, they're intrapreneurs. Yep. They're just doing it inside a business. That's it. Yeah. When I, when I first got a job selling cars, dude, I walked in and I had a pen and a kick ass suit. I just came from fucking with forest fires. It was like hard labor, dirty. I walked in, I'm in a suit looking all badass. I got a pen. I see all these fucking cars on the lot and I'm sitting here going, dude, this is my business. This guy's paying for the cars to be here, the gas to be here, the receptionist, the lights, the lot, but it was my fucking lot. That's it. And it's like, I was instantly in business just getting a job there. And now all this was my inventory. Like, dude, that's an awesome opportunity. Totally. I recommend I recommend everybody go into the car business for a year or two oh, just to get the boot camp, mm-hmm. you know. The thick, thick skin. skin mm-hmm. freaking basic experience of life. Yeah, totally, man. Because number one. You guys I'd... all sell cars or no? Yeah, 100% of them did sell cars, and they were the top achievers in their company selling cars. They destroyed it. And Dude, how do car salesmen allow or how do car dealerships allow you to come into their organization knowing full well that half their team is going to want to leave with yours well so number one that's a great question and i want to say something just by the way um my guys and i I want you to try something here real real quick brad and you may not believe me because this is a little tough okay but my guys before we go into other people talking about recruiting their people or their people want to come into you my guys are unrecruitable you know what that means, you want, Brad? You want Without to make a doubt. sure your team is. I want managers and leaders to understand that their people keep leaving because they're not managers. They're, I mean, they're not leaders. They're managers. They're not inspiring. They're mo- not motivated. They're not leading in any way, shape, or form. But what we do, when we go into a store, first of all, we explain to everybody that this is the best opportunity they ever had. We respect their management staff. We brainwash them that they're in the best store in the history of time. And we make them fall back in love with their store or fall in love for the first time. But guess what? When we leave... What we do is whoever, whatever we touch becomes infected with nothing but greatness. And by the way, it lasts for a long time. And if they'll stick on the training on light speed, which you have, which has allowed us to grow at light speed, guess what? We are going to change the way selling has been done forever. Something that you said is you said average. You want to change average for salespeople. We're doing it, but you can't do it by yourself. You're going to need a team. We're your team, Brad. We're your team. All right. We're the Elliott Group. Hell of we a work team. for Brad this Lee. This is my team, folks. Hey, your team. Let's go, baby. Hey, 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 hey. And by the way, what I'm saying by that is I like somebody... it. I like it because I don't even have to pay my team. There you go. <laughs> hey, hey, shit, we pay you. Dude, you're <laughs> that's a damn good team. That's member. a great team. But hey. you know what, Brad? You contribute more to us than the money that we give you. Well, if you like that, you, you know, just wait because I haven't even started yet. Good. FYI, that's a bomb. Yeah, it's a bomb. That's, That's a, a bomb, bomb, baby. Ooh. That's a bomb. That's exciting. But I want to say this. We would never recruit anybody. Our job is to inspire and motivate and give the people the courage that they need to actually train. Because in the automotive space, unlike real estate, insurance, anything else, if you're an insurance agent and you're training right now, you get the badge of honor. They're like, oh, my God, you went to a training event. You are an entrepreneur. Sales guy spends thousands of dollars or even a couple hundred on himself. They're like, dude, I could have taught you that. Why'd you spend money on yourself? Here's my point. We're changing that in the automotive space. We've already changed it. We've got warriors built all around the world 
But as we go now into other spaces, this, this podcast, not to get distracted, is about how to build a team. And I'm going to explain this to you, Brad. It all starts at the head. So anybody watching this right now that wants a team, your people will not work for you and they will be recruitable forever until they believe in your mission and they see where they fit in your company Is that why it's forever. important to blow the ones out that don't? Well, the deal is, is that blowing the ones out that don't, we probably hired the wrong people in the beginning. And I want to say something. He said this in the beginning, Brad, the, the two or three people that we had in our company that left was the greatest thing that ever happened to us. You know what? They say, we want to go make more money. Rule number one, never hire anybody because they want to make money. You hire people that want to be around your company, that believe in you, and that'll stand by your fi- side and fight and build to, for your company. And guess what? In the end, they'll make more money than they know what to do with. And they'll be loyal. Brad, if I was asked for two words that are very important to you, I don't even need to ask. You'd say loyalty and you'd say trust. And you'd say, if I can have those two things with you, I can put up with anything. And by the way, now if that guy's coachable, it's over. We ask one question. But only if you know how to coach. That's right. Which is why but not you everyone, have. But not everybody can do what you do. But everybody has access to me. What do you mean? That means 918-210-0254. You can text us right now and we will show you how to build your sales team and you can join with people that will help you. Because by the way, everybody has a coach. Everybody who or wants to be should, good. At least. Or they should, right. And if you don't have a coach, it just clearly means that you're either afraid, okay, which somebody else is going to kick your ass because you're paralyzed with fear, or you've never invested in yourself because you don't think you're worth it. Or you did it with somebody before and guess what? You got burnt. And I'm going to tell you this, all those are excuses. Yeah, but what if you get somebody like they're good, they, they fit in mostly, but they're not quite the fit. Like, for example, you take me as an example. If I lived in Scottsdale and I'm like, man, I'm coming to fucking hang with these guys. And someone came in, like Bowski came in and you all said, let's throw his ass in the air. I'd just be in the back going. Because 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 I don't want to throw. No Brad, that's in that's the Sean. That's Sean. Sean doesn't throw people in the air. You know what Sean does? Sean's the guy at the end of the day. He'll walk around and make sure everybody's mindset. He's called the mindset monster. He'll make sure everybody's mindset is in the right yeah, so place. No, nobody has to freaking throw people in the air if they don't want to. Everybody has. Y'all a role. just so want to throw, wanna throw people. Brad. But Sean, Sean right here, he believes more in the company than probably anybody in the world. So his special deal is that like he may not be the hype guy. We all have our own like, you know, w- areas that we fit in. But, but this someone, dude, someone... this dude started with him and has the biggest belief. But That's did, how we all but came. Did somebody say, hey, we need some hype guys. Or did the hype guys just appear and start hyping? Do you want the story? Andy can tell you the story of how this all unfolded. It's a beautiful design. We wrote it down on paper on what we needed to scale the company. And these guys came into our lives after looking for him. We looked for him for six months. We went through about nine people. We started talking to people about, hey, this is what we're doing. We're like, now nah, ego. No ego. Too much pride. Came across the twins. And I reached out to them. They're like, nah, man, car guys are all the same. I'm like, not this guy. Not Andy Elliott. Let me take you for a ride for a minute. You think you're good? You're the top, they're the top producers for Nissan in the country. Seven years in a row. Okay? So think about that. They're doing some big things. Eight and a half, Sean. I apologize. Eight and a half years. So I said, why don't you come down off that big old mountain and go climb a bigger mountain with Andy Elliott and talk to my boss? I, they right, showed man, up. Let's go. We destroyed them. By the way, they loved it. They got well, you just, you just, you just don't see people that are real, you know, like this group, you know. And so what we saw was the massive energy, the massive fire. Didn't matter if we were the top salespeople in the nation or you know where we were at. We were guys that one time didn't believe in ourselves, and we knew what it was like for other people to go through the things that we went through and to be by ourselves. So when we saw this team, that was a smaller team at that time letting people borrow their belief and show them exactly how they could go to the next level. Look, we're at eight years. We're atop of this brand. We're crushing it. We're killing it. And uh, we weren't fulfilled. We were still kind of dead inside, man. We were still looking for, you know, like no leadership. Yeah. Well, we had no leadership. It was me and him pushing every day, just figuring it out side by side every day. We're like, man, you know what? I mean, we're putting up big numbers. We're putting up big money, but we, there was always, there's always been a shortage of leadership in the world. And there was definite shortage of leadership in the car business. And so we never had that. When we saw that, and then we saw the wicked skill that Andy could teach us. It not only changed our company, you know, the company that we were at, um, but it changed us. And then we said, you know what? Our energy was really close to the same. You know, they believed in, you know, in, in you know, their faith, number one, in their family, in their fitness. And so it really just aligned. But I think that's where you can attract a lot of the people that you want to do business with if you became that person. He was that person. She was that person. And so it was easy for us to see, you know, people that, you know, all everybody talks a big game. But when you show up and you're with them, 
they're a thousand percent of what you see online and nobody, nobody, you know, other than like people like you, Brad, you're real. You lay Damn it out there, you know, you lay it out there, you lay it out there. It, it's, hey, you know it what not, you're going to get, be as hype, you know, hey, me. you know, but you know, still handsome, you know, not as handsome as me and my, me and my That's brother right here. But, uh, I mean, you know, he's, he's growing the mullet out, so he's doing better. You know, he's going with his deal, but they attracted what they wanted to get. You know, Sean talks about this life by design. They designed the plan that they wanted to get. And then they saw the outcome through just based off of what they knew that they were going to expect. They had a standard, you know, and then they drew a line in the sand and it was, you know, you didn't have to be the hype guy. We're not just running off of like, you know, false hype where I'm like, Hey, what's up? Oh my God. Like we run this way because we feel so passionate inside about the way that we run, the way that we take care of ourselves, the way that we take care of our families, the way that we are that, you know, we're just on fire, you know, anywhere we go, guys, people, anywhere go we go, home, Brad, people are like, who are you guys? What's the deal, dude? Hey, What's you, the deal? You go home to your families. Are you all just fucking intense? And well, fucking there, let, let, let me, let me, well, let me, let me, let me answer that. Playing our whole lives, children more intensely than well, ever before. Well, let, here, Brad, let me explain something. To you. Our whole lives in the car business, we were taught you could either be like good business people or good sales people, but like you couldn't have everything. And I was always searching to find everything. And I wasn't searching for more money when, you know, when, and when Sean reached out to me, I was searching to just be better in life. And I didn't have anybody to lead me to show me that you could be, you know, great in your personal, great in your, you know, mental, great in your physical, great with your family. So I was always lacking in what one of those areas trying to piece them together. And then what Andy showed us by his leadership and by actually doing it and not being a fraud, but yeah, actually living it, it but actually easy. living it, but actually like living it, you guys, that changed us. Yeah. I'll see you when you're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But th that's, that's really the deal that really changed all of us. And it's made people always say, why do you guys feel the way you feel? Well, you know, we run at a hot 110. Andy runs at a hot 120. He'll say 110. He's running at 120. We're running at a 110, 115. We're chasing him. We're trying to outthink him. We're trying to level him up. We're constantly trying to chase him because of, that feeling inside of we know the purpose, we know the mission, but we also see where we fit in that vision, which I think he's talking about. And then that makes you inspired. And then that's what a team really wants to run off of. So when everybody's asking us how we feel, who are those guys? It's like, you know, we want the world to feel like we feel and our salespeople that we coach, we're not coaching them on some crap that we ain't done before. You know, we've been where they've been at. We've gone where they want to go, but we also know what it's like to feel and be in their shoes or be in entrepreneurs and owner's shoes when they reach out and they're struggling in those areas you know sometimes you just don't know what you don't know but it's not okay to not just not know what you know you need to reach out and find people that you can be around that are going to make you run hot they yeah, can teach yeah, you Brad, things. everybody needs a coaching life a long time ago i watched a podcast in 2018 you did with grant cardone right and you look totally different dude i mean it's just crazy yeah that's money that's like why stud you look like the marble man Mar yeah. marble man how do you, i don't even smoke i don't know how we say that i don't even but, know what that is but marble. but like he's just cool marble. brad's just cool now but back then it was just you were young you were green behind the ears it was only a couple of years ago it was your first 10x deal but you look different watch the podcast i swear you speak different you talk different you still got the charisma the well, character that, back then and it was a lot more than two years ago no it's five I, years I ago it's 2018 no no not 2017 10x what was the 10x interview i saw 27 2018 it was on youtube you sure it was a 10x interview yeah i said brad will be here speaking you were like hey he was like brad tell us what's going to happen you said hey then i'm going to ruin it and he's like nah tell us anyway half people ain't going to make it so it doesn't matter and then that you, was like let's see when was that was that 17 yeah 16, yeah see 17 18 16, i got you it's 18 16. check later it's no big deal it's 16. 17 and 18 and he doesn't forget oh, this stuff he's I on youtube all day long i, I want to say something brad every person that's out there right now every single one of them I just want you to do this. Go to your, just do me a favor. Just go to your ATM, okay? And I want you to ask yourself a question. Is the path you're on now going to allow you to retire? That's all I want to know, okay? Because I know everybody one day does want to retire. Number two, I'm going to say something. Brad, I want to talk about side hustles because you're a massive entrepreneur. I don't believe in side hustles. Everybody's like, dude, I got side hustles. I got side hustles. I got side hustles. I'm going to explain how side hustles for a minute. And then I'll go in. If you got massive side hustles that are making you millions of dollars, I'm cool. But for somebody that doesn't have seven streams of income with multiple millions of dollars coming in, I want to get any um, low level, non earned coming in entrepreneur to understand side hustles. Side hustles are very, very easy. A lot of people think that side hustles, they need a lot of them. No, they don't. Listen to me. If you do five things, Brad, if you do five things and I only do one, I'm going to smoke your ass at what I do at one thing. I'm going to kill you. There's no way you can compete with me if you do five and I only do one. I'm going to bury you, man. 
So by the way, if I'm the top 1% in the world at what I do at any side hustle, one, which means I don't get distracted by the others and I just do one, I'm going to make a lot of money doing that one thing. Then that one thing is going to make me a lot of money and then I'm going to invest that money, which is what you teach. Now you've got money to do things with. Now you've got seven streams of income. I'm going to tell everybody who's an entrepreneur right now, an entrepreneur is to create. That's what it is, right? Okay. You made this vehicle. They walk out, they jump in it. Next thing you know, they grind their ass off three years from now. They're multi, multi multi-millionaires. They can continue to do it. They can go do whatever the hell they want because they have cash. How old are you right now? What would your life look like in three years from now? If you spent the next three years with Brad Lee, if you spent the next three years making money, if you spent the next three years becoming the best in the freaking world at influencing, persuading, closing negotiations, overcoming objections and building your brand and becoming a great person. Damn. Networking. You, you left Son out a million a things you're going to learn. Even if you quit, you're going to walk away with those skill sets, which are ultimately life I would have given my legs away, Brad, to hear heard this when I was 23 years old. Dude, if I would have heard it when I was 23 years old, man, I would be, be a, far be 100 ahead. 100 billionaire. I would be far ahead. So, so again, uh, Andy, on a regular basis, what are you doing for training? Like if so, people are thinking, yeah, but dude, I don't, I've never done it before. I don't know if I can sell. I don't know about all that. Yeah. So it's really easy. So the second you text the number, we're going to get your pre-licensing. You're going to take your test. Second, you take your test. You're going to pass your test, right? Once you get that, you come over to me. Now, what happens is you're going to have access to online training, which is Brad's VT system, which is wicked. Multi-million dollar interactive training dude, and communication It's the sickest platform. thing ever. Our whole Elliott group thrives off his company. Now, listen to me. Now, this system, it shows you from A to Z exactly how to sell. Now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we do live training. We role play calls. We show you how to do it. By the way, it is very simple. You're not selling anybody anything. You're just helping people get something that they want. Everybody's born. Everybody's going to die. You're helping people on the worst day of their life. Make sure that they have some money in place so their family isn't ruined when someone passes away. That is it. It's very simple. It's good. It helps people and you can make a lot of money doing it, which is why Brad is like, dude, why didn't somebody tell me about this when I was younger? Okay. It's the best thing ever. When I sold cars, I sold cars. Sure. I provided a great service. That was awesome. But I wasn't really changing someone's life whenever I did that. Now we are. So I like all sales and I made up with it, but this niche individually, the low barrier of entry, what do we do daily? We train you how to be great. Number one, just being on the call, like physically watching this podcast, this is like a sales call daily with us. We talk to you, we help work out your problems. There's no way No way that you could fail unless you didn't do the work. That's it. Or unless you didn't get a license. But that's it. So everybody, I'm just telling you, Brad, watching this, like, dude, I'm psycho weighed up with it. My goal is, as a lot of of people are struggling, we have a big sales training company, which is the LA Group. People call in every day. They're like, man, I got to go to the next level. I've got to level up. Dude, this doesn't even cost anything. It's free. And all you have to do is take action. That's it. So... I'm, I'm grateful, man. I've, I've seen a lot of your people that are amazing, that, uh, that love you and they're always inspired by you. And they always ask, Hey, how do I do better at my job? And then I know why you created, created this because you created it where they could actually have something. If what they currently had, they didn't want to do anymore. And that's what I love it. And that's why I love being a part of it because as long as they get a license, they're ours. And I think they're the future. Yeah. And I think anyone can get a license. It's not rocket science. I've seen some pretty dumb friends of mine get their license. And I, I mean, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. You got to, you got to study. Dude, I had to take it twice. I'm just going to be honest. But I mean, you got to study. You got to pay attention because they're going to ask you specific questions. It's a regulated industry. So you got to. And by the way, if any of that scares you anyway, just listen, text the number or you can go, if you're not, if you don't have a phone handy, just, yeah, I got a computer next to you. Go to Brad Lee, L-E-A, bradlee.com forward slash let's go. Now, I prefer you to text because now once you text me, you get that, you get the information and it's all automated. If you go in the other way, I got to rely on people giving you a call and trying to figure shit out. So text, if you can, 712-409-7325. But again, if you don't want to do that, you can go to bradley.com forward slash let's go. But either way, get that shit done. Yeah. And and Brad, I know we're we're about to end this. I want to say one thing. If anybody's made it to this point in the call, you're the true one percenters. Okay. Whether you switch, you don't do whatever. I just want you to understand something. But this ain't a call. This is a podcast. It's a podcast. Dude, it was going to be a podcast. Now it sounds like a commercial. 
No, it's not. What it is, absolutely. Hey, it, I'm it, not afraid to, to do a commercial for Real Financial. I mean, dude, it's oh, we're, yeah. we're saving lives over here. Well, what I hear, I'm is, just saying, I was going to interview you to get your freaking sales knowledge, get, yeah. get you know, drop some bombs on all kinds of shit. But dude. it sounds like. It just keeps going well, back I think to, it's you, need I, to, you need to be in real financial. Well, it's, it's, I think it's because I wore the real financial army shirt today. And that's all we've talked about because that's how we've been killing it. And I just, and by the way, we have multiple businesses. Okay. This is just one way that if, if you're watching this, that you would like to be in close proximity to Brad or me or energy and fire and people who level you the hell up, you want to make some money. You want to partner with us? Good. This is it. It doesn't cost you anything. You get your license. You're on the team. Young or old. It doesn't matter. Male or female. Doesn't Damn matter. right. That's it. So so I think that when we talk about stuff, we give people like an opportunity. Dude, all the sales training goes into it. When people listen to podcasts, a lot of people are looking for the next step, Brad. So I don't think it's a bad thing to give something out there for people. Because I'm telling you, there's a time in my life where I wish somebody gave me a freaking road. Yeah. Well, it sounds like that's it. No, no, I <laughs> just like my sound effects. <laughs> so just real quick though, if, if somebody's having an issue in the sales world, like this is separate than real financial, yeah. they're, they're having an issue in the sales world, right? They don't know how to sell. They don't know how to close, but they're willing to, they're, they're on a sales team. They're just sucking. What would you have them do? Well, so number one, that's, that's our niche. And that's how me and Brad partner together. We own a company called the Elliott group. If you don't know who I am, I'm Andy Elliott. Um, Literally becoming the greatest salesperson in the history of time has never been easier because we are in the era of the worst salesman in the history of time. So if you want to be great, if you want to literally recreate yourself, have massive confidence, learn how to be a public speaker, physically get what you want in life in every area of life, look in the mirror and like who the hell you are. That, that's where I come in. And people say, well, I don't want to be a public speaker. You no, already are you, one. You already are one. You already are one. You talk to your wife. Does she want to listen to you? If she don't want to listen to you, guess what? Learn how to speak, learn how to communicate, learn how to talk. By the way, what we're just saying, communication, that's what closing is. Brad, me and you, we call ourselves closers, right? Which means we can close transactions. That means communications. We're master communicators. We make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and we make it the customer's idea every single time. We play chess. We don't play checkers like amateurs. There's amateurs and pros. Did everybody agree 99% of the world is amateurs? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. We're pros. You know what that means? We'll teach you to be pros. So the Elliott group. We can transfer certainties so we can transfer certainly. That come on, man. Hey, but, but so, so every time I'm on here, I've always said this, our company is the Elliott group. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. And, um, you know, everybody texts us all the time. On hey, the if you're a, if you're a sales, I mean, cause I got a lot of entrepreneurs listening. If you have a sales team and you want someone to train you, that's who I would have train your sales team. So hit him up on what, what uh, I'd hit up the Elliott group. Yeah. Let me give you my cell phone. Also, and, also, if you guys just want to go check out his YouTube channel, he gets shit tons of views on his YouTube. It's all free. People talking about, they learn more on his YouTube. YouTube, free YouTube than they have with some sales courses that, yeah, are that they for. pay for. Yeah. And just check it out. I mean, and by the way, listen, listen, I believe in total recreation before we get off this, I'm going to say this, that 918-210-0254, my cell phone, you can text me, but I want to talk about this. If you're not where you want to be, if you're not, I will take you there. I will stretch you. I will beat on you until you become that. Brad said, well, some people don't want to do that. Guess what? Then you're not right for me. But for you crazy people out there that are really ready to go to another level, that are sick and tired of being sick and tired, I promise you I'm your dude. That's, that's, why, sure. that's why we're a good mix. You're, yeah. you, you bring that intensity and I bring the chill, laid back coolness of it all. We got the same goals. Hey, you know you why? Because like I, like, I like to say you're a coach. I'm a consultant. People are yeah. like, what's the difference? Dude, I'll tell you what to do, but I'm not going to show up and get in your face and see if you're doing it and motivate you and tell you how good you are and blah, blah, blah. That's what a coach does. Coach gets you to come out of yourself. A coach gives you to give more than you would give without a coach. A consultant just tells you what to do. I mean, I tell people what to do, dude, but I don't show up like you do. I don't freaking get up in there and like every night of the week you're on coaching calls, coaching and, 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 List, literally molding these people. And I've seen people, you know, 20 years old to 60 years old going, holy shit, dude, where's this been my whole life? Yeah. So again, you don't need to join Real Financial to access old Andy Elliott. If, you're a, if you have a sales 
team or you are a salesperson that wants mm-hmm. sales training, you know, he, he, he does all kinds of sales training, not just real financial. But if you're interested in making money and you want to join real financial yep. and you want to work with me and him and, and, and everything we talked about the whole podcast long, dial 712-409-7325. The link will be in the rest. Um, and as always, till next time, keep it real. At the end of the day, the reason you have those people in your life is part of the reason you're not where you want to be. So now you got to ask yourself a question. Are you more important than them? Because you might have been raised to think not. Who are you? You're not very important. We're supposed to remain humble. You know, we're not supposed to think we're better than other people. 